I was going to cover the podcast that started, but it did. And then she went this whole Hello! <laughs> Something's way too loud. <laughs> okay, tell us about what the podcast Welcome to the Baking It Down with Sugar Cookie Marketing Podcast. We are actually a spinoff from a group on Facebook. Almost 46,000 bakers nice still on cars. We be like normal and you're like, welcome, welcome to, to the car dealership. Cormac. <laughs> to your right, you'll find many luxury vehicles perfectly designed for your family. It was like, needs. let's run your credit. <laughs> well, buddy, if you look to your left, that's the exit <laughs> door. I think that's a good way to say it. If you're just hearing well, this, let me the do the intro time, music. If you're just hearing this for the first time, you need something to kind of guide you in so you don't get our abrasive laughs it's not, off the bat. I, I like the guide. It's just that your whole personality changes to tour guide yeah. Barbie. Yes. So you feel like this is a normal person. You're like, what up? What, Welcome yeah. to the Sugar yes. Cookie Marketing Baking <laughs> Down podcast. <laughs> Please keep your arms inside the monorail until it comes to a complete stop. <laughs> okay. Today's podcast topic is birthed. Birth. Birth? From a you concept. Remember. Yeah, I know. It sounds so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, push. <laughs> From a post I made yesterday. About complaints we've seen in the group. And I think that people think I'm a bully. You're and I a am. a bully. I'm a bully. <laughs> I'm a bully. But I am because tough love is necessary at this stage of our year, of the industry's year, mm-hmm. really. So right now, you should be experiencing slower sales. You will crawl into summer and you won't notice that sales actually drop further because you're out of town. I see how you tied the baby in. Birth, now we're at crawling. Walking As you toddle in into <laughs> sadness, <laughs> <laughs> you will dream over there. So I, uh, in the group, we get these posts. And from an admin perspective, they're actually damaging in more than one way. Okay, so the post typically is like, hey, guys. And they're innocent posts and they're probably just founded 100% I just in think reality. it's like someone frustrated. Yeah. Comes to the group and says, these people will understand where I'm coming from. Absolutely. And they do. And that therein lies the problem. So the posts are like, hey, my sales are slow. My sales are low. It wasn't like this last year. Woe is me. Woe is me. What do? And then they also, sneak in a little bit. I just want to do a little caveat, a little asterisk. Mm-hmm. We've been in doing this for so long. Those posts go up every single year. <laughs> yeah. And so you're not, you're not experiencing anything we haven't seen. It feels like it feels like it's new because a lot of people maybe are in their first or second yeah. year. The first year you're yeah. just figuring it out. The second year, maybe third Here's year the you thing. have comparison. first year you're coming from zero. So every sale mm. is amazing. Second year you've actually established a user base and you're establishing subliminal data points. Uh-huh. This is how I'm doing. This yeah. is how I feel like I'm doing. You didn't have that last year. Right. Every everything was growth. Third year, it's a comparison. Yeah. I'm also gonna suggest that a lot of you guys aren't keeping great numbers and you're going off of feelings. Yeah. Which feelings. right now you feel slow because Easter last year was actually in April. I know. And Easter and this year was the in March. variables are so different. You can't, you have well, to wait yeah, till another March compare. Easter. Absolutely. So, anyways, you come to the group, tears in your eyes, and you say, nothing's working. And then in your post, which is an innocent post, you sneak in a little, little bit. There's a lot more competition. A little jabby jab. A little jabby jab that it's not you, it's them. Mm-hmm. That means. When you point the finger at everyone but yourself, that means everyone but you has to change. Yeah. It is the easy man's way out. It's an untouchable excuse. And then, and then what happens? Because those are bat signal threads. Yeah. It gets sour. You have other people who maybe have thought a little bit the same way, like Mm -hmm. my sales could be slow. Then they see your post and they're like, oh, it's, it's other people too. Yes. It's the bakers that have come up. Here's the thing you have to remember. As many people are coming into the industry, that many people are leaving the industry. Mm-hmm. We've seen it. Man, some names that used to post in the group and I would be like, well, this is a ride or die. I, I look and they've left the group. They've actually left the industry. Yeah. They're not working in a diff- completely yeah. different Yeah, or job. I'll see them in like a buy, sell, trade cutter group and they're like unloading. Yeah, they're out. Yeah. Right. So, but we've been able to see this for four years. So while you're panicked in your second year, first year, third year, we're Chilling like a villain because that is – this is typical, right? Yes. This is what happens. But then you come to the group sad, sorrowful, mm-hmm. just need a shoulder to cry on. And now you have 50, 45,000 people's shoulders to mm-hmm. cry on. The problem is what you're going to see is a confirmation bias of other people who also like to blame everyone but themselves. Mm-hmm. The comment sections of these threads often and hilariously say, well, the twins ruined it because they taught people how to market and sell, and now my market's saturated. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You You are welcome. (laughs) I'm sorry for doing the group. (laughs) It's the same concept. When you say, 
it's because there's too much competition. It's the same concept Corey and I were talking about it. When you have a housing development that was built and then they're trying to build another housing development and the first people were like, we want no new houses. As they walk into the house, they just buy. I know. It's like good for me, but not for thee. You are not allowed to. Only I am. And only I'm allowed to sell cookies. And even though I moved in on some other cookiers turf back when I started, uh -huh. you're not allowed to do that to uh -huh. me. It's easier for me if all of you are at fault for trying something new, uh -huh. for trying to earn an additional income uh-huh right uh-huh so in a way you are actually the bully uh -huh. anyway so i have to lock those threads and it's and i always get a little hate mail i get the little wow reacts or the angry reacts uh -huh. because they don't like a little dose of tough love i want to tell you business there's no coddly love in business i've only felt tough love in business Oh, it's all fair and love more, right? <laughs> so what happens is if we wrapped you in swaddling clothes, your little baby. Oh, a little baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. Going back to the yeah. birth. <laughs> if we wrapped your attitude in a little blanket and say it's okay, guess what? You do nothing. You're off the hook now. You're off the hook. Your, your sales still do not rebound, but yeah. you don't have to. You get to blame everyone but yourself. You get to cry into your bottle milk. Yeah. And, say, and you get to say – Shut it down. It's no longer someone else is taking the business. I'm done. I'm out. Let me yeah, go. Sell it's a myself. very like baby like mindset. If we're gonna just lean into this baby thing, you it's like a when a <laughs> little kid plays with the toy. Yeah. And then they're done with it and somebody else wants to grab the toy and you're like, no, it's mine. Yeah. That's yeah. my son went through that big mm -hmm. time. If he didn't get what he wanted, he wanted nothing at all. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the only person here suffering is you. Absolutely. <laughs> so back to the baker, the same thing. Well, I'm uh, my sales are bad. Are your sales bad? Your sales are bad too. Okay, our sales are bad. We're not doing this anymore. Like the only, like everybody else, your competition is like, yes, they're out. They're out. <laughs> One less for me to compete with. And that's very, a small minded, a small childlike mindset where you think, well, I'm not having a good thing. So I'm going to sit here and cry and you guys should stop selling so that I can sell. Yeah. And that's uh, the opposite of marketing. Uh -huh. And that's why I lock those threads. And people are like, well, you're just creating an echo chamber of where people are not allowed to complain. Yeah, exactly. That's the goal. Uh -huh. I don't want you to complain because for the next five days, guess what we as a mod team have to deal with? Complaints. Uh -huh. Woe is me. This person does this. The prices are too low. The, the ingredients costs are too high. I want everyone to take a step back. What we we haven't set, told people to do a race to the bottom and charge nothing. We're telling everyone charge more so that the industry can survive. Mm -hmm. So while, yes, we're teaching you marketing tips and tricks, we're also saying you got to charge your worth. You can't work bottom dollar. So mm -hmm. if you think about it, we've helped the industry mm -hmm. like make tell more them, money. Tell them that again. Just in case you I'm, I'm just, just throwing it out there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Noodle okay. to a wall. <laughs> so I wrote this post yesterday. And that's going to be the podcast topic today because Corey actually found a TikTok that aligns pretty well with it also. So it says, I often see people complain about their local markets in this group. The price of butter is too high. Competitive prices are too low. Market is saturated. The market doesn't want cookies. Too many people are teaching classes. Too few people are taking classes. The competition isn't as good as you. The competition has more tag happy friends than you. You get the point. It's 45,000 people. So we get the honor of reading many contradicting opinions on why sales weren't where we expected them to be. Technically, you can only write the cookie game is over if you attempted every marketing tactic covered in this group. Then and only then could you say with confidence that the party is over, turn off the lights. I mean, can you say you won't win a foot race if you never ran the race in the first place? Same applies to marketing. You can't say you can't sell anything if you didn't try everything in your power to sell it. You can't say no one buys my cookies if you never told absolutely everyone that you were selling cookies, right? Mm -hmm. Then it goes into this list of things that we've actually covered on this podcast to sell more cookies, which we're going to cover in a second. Skipping to the bottom. I'll go back to this. I could go on. All of these are topics we covered on the Baking It Down podcast. Yes, there's no cookies. <laughs> and they, they're each a part of a well-rounded marketing strategy designed to, you guessed it, sell more cookies. But Heather, that list is ridiculously long. I'm too busy to do everything on that list, but I do do some of the stuff on there. You can't expect us to do all of that. Mm -hmm. You're right. I don't expect you to do all of that, but I also don't expect you to call the cookie game Dunzo until you've tried everything on the list. The reason your sales are slow is because you're too busy. You said it yourself. I'm too busy to do everything on that list. And that is normal. But that's the cause, not the market. I click to the profiles of the folks blaming market saturation for low sales. And what can I say? I'm as nosy as you are. What do I see most of the time? Low effort captions, no copy formulas, sporadic posting, no clear call to action, no video post, no website. Only one or two social profiles, low effort product photography, no value added content, no cookie classes, no new products, taking long breaks, and no email lists. How can you expect to max out sales when you didn't max out the effort required to get those sales? 
The audience never lies. They tell you the truth by how they spend their money. If they're not spending money with you, guess what? You get the opportunity to go back to that list I write, I wrote and try something mm -hmm. new. Uh, you'll keep trying stuff on that list until you see results because for as many people complain about low sales, there's an equal number posting about selling out. Trust me, I wouldn't write this if I did think you're leaving money on the table. If I didn't think you're leaving money on the table, the market is, if the market's truly dead, we'll shut down all the groups. You'll know because Corey and I, the offer. <laughs> we will be hemorrhaging cookie cutters. But it's not dead. In fact, folks are using cookie money to pay for their mortgages, buy new cars for their families, and take little ones to see the tan Florida mouse. Typically, I get hate mail when I lock the woe is me threads. Heather, they were just stating their experience. They wanted help. And no doubt, I fully believe that they are experiencing slower sales. But I'm not sure that they wanted help as much as they wanted a pity party because help is everywhere in this group. 170 Facebook Lives. Literally thousands of posts on marketing tactics and the cookie college included. That's why I lock it. You can't say no one is buying when you're not doing everything required to sell it. So in summary, yes, I'll continue to lock those threads because sales aren't low effort is. Until you tried absolutely everything, you're not allowed to say nothing is working. Make sense? Feel free to take your pity party to other groups. But here, instead of asking, why are my sales so low? Ask instead, what did someone try that increased sales in Q2? The difference in the first question, one gets the market's over response and the other one gets a, hey, try this, it worked for me. Mm. Effort is everything. Also, please stop sending me hate mail. I don't want to see you fail. I want to see you win and some tough love may be required or find a group that lets you vent. I encourage you to surround yourself with like-minded members and this place won't always be it for some. Amazing that's wow. <laughs> I could go the whole thing. I'd say almost <laughs> we the attitudes are abysmal. So before I go back to the list, tell us what you watch on TikTok about Disney. So it was this marketer, he's a social media marketer, work with huge brands. And he says one thing that you'll always see is that the biggest brands that we all know and we all love, Disney, um, Target, Coca Nike, Coca-Cola they still spend money on marketing. And you might be like, why would they need to spend any money on marketing? We already know what they are. And it is with the out of sight, out of mind. And everyone suffers from it. So if you're, if the laundry is out of sight, out of mind, we obviously don't put it away. Hey, we listen, don't do it's it. It's a personal attack. And I, I know. Like it. <laughs> I walked past your laundry. <laughs> <laughs> but the same thing is with marketing. So if the biggest companies out there are still investing in their marketing, what makes you think that your one little post to hold up your entire teacher appreciation pre-sale is going to do the same thing. Yeah. The difference between a post and a campaign is a lot of effort. Yeah. And there's a lot of money behind a campaign, a marketing campaign, as far as paid ads go. Mm -hmm. A post is free, but then you are held back by the parameters of Facebook wants to get paid. It's a business too. Mm -hmm. So your 32 likes and followers, you're only reaching a portion of those people. But the beautiful thing about social media, and that's what the TikTok guy said, is that it levels a playing field. We'll never, we'll never be able to compete yeah. with the likes of Coca-Cola. Uh -uh. Because their pockets are tremendously deep. But what we can compete with is Coca-Cola on Facebook. Uh -huh. Because we all are sharing the same feed. Granted, Coke can run an ad, but guess who also can? Yeah. You can. We yeah. can't run a TV ad. Yeah, we can't afford that. <laughs> but what we can all do is learn Facebook ads. But what I'm going to hear is, well, I tried it once and it didn't work. You tried what once? You tried running one ad one time? There are people who are taking literal courses, certifications that take months to acquire to run Facebook ads. And you boosted something one time and didn't like the results? But – your one boosted post that did poorly, you'll go and tell someone in a group ads. Tried don't Facebook work. ads, they don't work. Tried it once, spent fifty dollars, got nothing. That's so little. That's a toxic mindset because one thing didn't I'm gonna work. Call for it you. a toddler mindset. Oh, back to the children. Back, where, where <laughs> Do you want going? children? I will <laughs> grow you to be my children. <laughs> it. I mean, this is kind of a come to Jesus moment because I so feel bad for people that are experiencing low sales and are discouraged. But at the end of the day business does not hold your hand. It's well, not. I don't feel bad. I actually don't feel bad. That's why I click to the profiles. And if you're like, oh my goodness, she's talking us. Yes, I am. Lock them down, buddy. But I can say, oh my goodness, you didn't do anything. You're using yeah. hashtag on Facebook. Uh -huh. You don't have any captions. You have no website. You're, you're linked to nothing. Your call to actions are muddled. I don't know, understand the ordering process. Yeah. Your pin posts are from last year. Yeah. So. And then you're like, well, my sales are low. So I made a list. I actually, all I did was pull up the podcast topics because I remember what we okay, talked about yeah. and I made a list. All right. These, if you don't do absolutely everything on this list, which you're not going to be able to, it's way too many yeah. things, but you can't come and say nothing's no. working until you tried it all. That's the word nothing mm -hmm. is, is it's so an absolute. eternal. It's an absolute. Yeah. 
So like you never pick up the trash. Is That's not true. People do pick up trash, but nothing's working. That's yeah. not true. Some things work. It's so hard to diagnose a comment of nothing's working because that means you've tried everything. So but here's on the flip side. Always in the shits. Always, 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 always. And why they have no value for this reason is – I'll come and be like, have you tried this? And they're like, tried it once, it doesn't work. And then I'll see somebody else write this beautiful comment saying like, hey, here's something that worked for me. Tried it, doesn't work. My my audience doesn't like classes. Yeah. Uh, everybody's audience seems to like classes. They're all teaching. <laughs> you. And it's so funny in the thread, someone's like, it's because the twins pushed out the cookie class kits. They trained all our audience and that's why it's failing. And then the next comment was, I tried teaching cookie classes. Nobody wanted to take them. Are we ruining the industry? (laughs) Are we not? (laughs) Nail us to the correct cross. (laughs) So it's like, wow, it's all of that is effort pushing the accountability, the effort Uh on other people. Uh They're teaching too many classes. Then guess what? Then your audience wants classes. Teach the class. Yeah. Well, yes. I don't want to train my – they're going to take classes from somebody. Uh-huh. Look at Corey, sourdough. She Listen. found – we drove an hour to get to that class. <laughs> yeah, if I will you take want a to, good class. <laughs> yeah, they will. But you're going to be like, well, I don't – Facebook ads don't work. And I don't post to social media because I don't know what to post. And I don't record videos because I don't have the right camera. And I don't take good photos because the sun's – like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I can't help you. Yeah. You want to drown. That victim mindset, man. Mm-hmm. I'm will. throwing – we're throwing life jackets and you're like pushing them away so you can yell at us and say, nothing's working and I'm drowning. <laughs> so here's some life jackets. How okay. Do uh, attempt to market to commercial businesses by dropping by with a logo cookie. Yeah. Listen, that is called grassroots marketing. Yeah. And it is getting your feet in the grass we walking actually, up to the door. We did an entire collab on it. it this wasn't our day. It was somebody in the group. So it was genius. And she said, oh, I go to my main street and I make their logo into a cookie and I go in and give it to them and say, if you guys ever want anything... So we did a whole collab yeah. on it and so many people said, oh my goodness, it resulted in a commercial yeah. sale. At the end of the day, the people who run those businesses also have families who probably have birthdays, you know? So mm-hmm. you might not end up in your corporate girly era. But, but Corey, we don't have a main street and when you come on town. Oh, mm-hmm. 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 Okay, moving <laughs> on. Worked on growing your review profiles by getting new reviews and responding to bad reviews in a way that will increase sales. Yeah. Corey, nobody leaves reviews. I tried. I ain't trying. I listen, asked them that one time and no way. You know. Listen, I know it's like pulling teeth mm-hmm. to get people to review. There's the entire, my husband's entire police department. I say, I will only give you free food if you leave me a review. And I have taken cookies right out of their hands, but there are people who leave reviews and there's review campaigns that you can run. I would say I almost think of this for every 20 people you ask, maybe one will. So again, you have to be asking 20 people on average to get one. If you're asking five and got zero, yeah, you didn't, you re- didn't read the 20. Also, I want to say, caveat, uh, <laughs> for us to want reviews and not leave. freely give reviews. Yeah. Could you imagine the small business owners like, no, it leaves me reviews either. Like nobody's leaving <laughs> nobody's these reviews. Leaving. If you're not getting them and you're not giving them, do you deserve them? Absolutely. Uh, focus on upping your curb appeal for in-person pick- pickups. Great, but, 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 but I, I, I rent the sun, my grass. The sun burns the plants by my Listen, door. I hate being bugified outside. No, no, Corey, listen, they paid me for my cookies, not for my yarn work. <laughs> Then Unless like, your, your name, name is Hot Mess Express Cookie Co. <laughs> You've got to do it's something. It's a part of the brand. <laughs> Implemented copy formulas to increase conversions. So it's the AIDA formula, PAS, for C's, for U's, before I have to bridge. This is probably the most slept on. Yeah. This is the thing. I just see people. Thanks, Carla, for your order. One, who's Carla? Why do you got a Carla? Why do you got to bring Carla? I don't know. I think because we were friends with the Carla. De- Deborah. Deborah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The whole like, thank you. Love this order. And, you know, frankly, when I click to the profiles, that's the biggest offender because I can see it right there. Every caption is like really cute on this one. Yeah. I always think when I see that, you must be so busy. You're trying to like push people away (laughs) while also being consistent in your marketing. Right. Like when I see low effort caption, but like Griff, I don't, I don't know the caption. That's, that's why they created the formulas and chat GTP can write a ton of captions for you. So there's not really an excuse for low effort. If you're in the cookie college or the cookie class kids, I write the captions. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of excuses when it comes to low effort captions for you to turn around and say, no one's buying. There's not buying because you didn't tell them uh-huh. you're selling. It's when I sold cars, it's called asking for the sale. Everything lines up. So what's stopping them from buying? So that's why you ask for it. Everything looks good. Why not? Let's roll your credit and see if you can afford this bad boy so you can ABC, drive it ABC, always be closing. <laughs> but a lot of these captions are just, I got to say, I, that's half of the reason. That's if until you shape that one up. That's where you should start. Yeah. See, I'm going to learn these caps. I'm going to learn these copy formulas. It sounds technical. It's not. Yeah. It's just like when you say, "Have you don't know what to buy your father-in-law?" I have the great, th- greatest thing since sliced yeah. bread. Here's this. It's new- not pre-sales open. 
order on website. Last day to place your order. That's that doesn't cause me any FOMO. Fear it's of it's missing not ex- out. It's not creating excitement. It's not, it's not adding yeah. energy. It doesn't sound like you really want to spell it on me. If it, I'm it almost sounds like you're you're timid. You're hoping I don't buy. Yeah, because you like, don't. You're so busy. You don't have time to make the cookies. You, you don't sound excited. So why am I excited to buy from you? Yeah, I'm and not excited. The FOMO gives your audience. Um, a, a target date and target time. So they're more likely to pull out their wallet because mm-hmm. sale is ending. Today is the final day. I only have five more of these. Someone said in the comments, um, yeah, just tell everyone your closing orders and you'll get more sales. Absolutely. Because yeah. That is that adds energy. Uh-huh. If you're boring, your sales will be boring. Yeah. Okay. Um, implemented customer delight methods to differentiate yourself from your competitors. That can be as easy as a car cookie. That can be as easy as surprising somebody with 50% off. It can, but Heather, please, you said to charge your worth. I said to charge your worth overall. You're still allowed to discount and give things away for free. Uh, since I'm to. in my sourdough journey yeah. and I'm making sourdough all the time because the yeast is always growing, mm-hmm. I have been throwing in bagels, sourdough yeah, loaves. I've some bagels from you. <laughs> To the, my customers who order. I'm like, hey, I'm in my sourdough journey era. This is just free for you. I made it this morning. You I had to give them away. I had to give – we can't eat had much bread. <laughs> I mean, we can, but – So being able to – something I'm already making. License to delight. Can you imagine – our older sister works for a company – that has a license to delight officer on it. Yeah. And they go out and I think they get, it's like a budgeting app or it's something. It's a license to delight the people who work on the team. It's not oh, even yeah. licensing to delight the people. It's where they find out people who are on the team's favorite things. And then they'll send them in a surprise yeah. box. I think someone had said, oh, I think it was something about they'd met on a plane. They had this couple that had ended up using this app had sat next to each other on a plane and connected over the fact that they have and this random two strangers had used this app yeah they end up getting married from That's sitting so on the plane crazy. but the conversation was started because of the mutual appreciation for this app so guess what they gave them tickets to fly to anywhere That's they insane. wanted the company did and yeah it turned around and the people were like oh my goodness i can't believe i've been so delighted yeah and but delight doesn't have to cost you a ton of money. Mm-hmm. Delight can come down to a handwritten note thanking Oof. them for choosing you as their baker, and you cannot wait to bake for them again in the future. That is it. That I, I mean, how many cards have I gotten been written? You know what? Like uh, the Bosch sale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's an affiliate thing. Would you make it very clear on Black Friday? Bosch runs some yeah. discount. You can only get the discount through an affiliate code. So, and we tell everyone if you want the discount here, click here. Bosch sent us like a box of only six chocolates. Yeah. And they were delightful. J- Heather, you would have thought I, someone built her a home. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. Like, but it was oh electable. They would eat in the home. Yeah. With uh, a nice little note in there. It was yeah, great. And I want to be like, Bosch paid us through the affiliate sales, which we, I think we ended up putting back into the Vendy Blendy. Uh-huh. But but that was so delightful. Yeah. Now, and I think of like, wow, that company really went the extra mile. It's yeah. so fun. And that it could have been someone writing the same note 50 million times to everyone who participated in the Bosch yeah. sale. You know, and I hate this, you know that the companies now get those handwritten I text. Well, now I like to, to yeah. touch it. To I need like, a depression. Is there, was there a pen? Have you seen they've gotten these robots that handwrite? <laughs> oh, listen, pull the wool over my I know. So I, wanna, I want to be <laughs> wool pulled. But Ruthann got this uh, holiday card from Kaiser Permanente. Yeah. And Ian's like, look, they handwrote it. I didn't have the heart to break it to her that no. it was printed. Let her live let in her, that world. She was delighted. Yeah. She said, wow, they care about me so much. They wow. wrote me this card. Wow. And now you guys who don't cover 50 million people in healthcare, you guys can write the handwritten yeah. note. And it would be delightful. That would be so nice to get. Um, used better adjectives to make your products and pitches sound more appealing in social media posts. This goes back to copy. Are you a cookie? Are you a delicious cookie? Yeah. Are you a baker? Are you a cottage home baker that bakes with love and the highest quality ingredients to make decadent pieces of baked art? Okay. Like, AI. Whatever, right. <laughs> AI is like, hello, friend. <laughs> Hello, dear. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of your copies kind of like, here's a cookie made. Like, thanks for the birthday party order. Almost they have to swim through your bloaty posts, if I'm being, if we're ripping off the band-aids mm-hmm. here, of you showing up things off to find where you're selling stuff. Mm-hmm. So you might do five posts, like, look what I did. You know, my favorite set I've ever made. Mm-hmm. And then one is like, pre-sale dropping tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sorry, we paid you with glory, lot, and honor. <laughs> now we have to give you our money. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as much as if you if you like writing those look at me glow posts, take that energy and write a good caption yeah. that supports a pre sale or supports a cookie class ticket. One thing selling. I just sign up. Oh. 
Back again. <laughs> the amount of fakers that will be like, announcement coming soon. And then I will go and scroll. I'm like, what is this announcement? Like, you got me excited and mm-hmm. then you ghosted on mm-hmm. the announcement. It's insane. Pre-sale dropping tomorrow. There's never a pre-sale that dropped. You know, it's crazy. And some of those, like, my sales are low post. And I have to dig a little because I'm only getting a service level complaint here. Yeah. And when I prod and pick a little bit and they're like, well, yeah, I did take off that one year. I'm you took off a year from baking and you wonder why your sales are low? Yeah. Your sales are low because you took off a year from baking. Uh-huh. It's not because there's too much competition. Uh-huh. You were sleeping and somebody just started uh-huh. baking. Um, moving on. Off the, off the high horses, sorry, please. Sorry. Dismount from your high horses. Work. No. <laughs> there. <laughs> Here's a uh, Streamline your branding for easier brand recognition across all print and digital profiles. I see this one as well. It's confusing. Your Instagram is old. Your Facebook page is a picture of your kids. Like yeah. It is confusing who you are, what you are, where you are. And it's easy to get... It's easy to make all these social profiles and forget to update yeah. them. But if you're going to be on it, be on yeah. it. Yeah. I will say the most unbranded thing is a random picture of a set you made as your profile picture. Mm. It Nothing will tell me I don't know who I'm tagging more mm. than that being changed so often. And there's no branding a part of it. If you've looked at any sugar cookie marketing profile or group, I've rebranded them in the last seven days because I want them to match cohesively to the website, which doesn't allow a lot of custom formatting. Yeah. So what's got to change? The one thing I can to make it all look cohesive so that the branding experience, when you go to a website, then you click to a group, then you click to a page, then you click to Instagram, or you even go to the Baking It Down, you'll see that there's uh-huh. a new graphic for the Baking It Down podcast now. It all says, oh, that's them. Yeah. Because when you have that sporadic, just random branding, it's kind of confusing. Yeah. I want to say unless you are your brand, like Mm -hmm. you personally, there was a big movement to put your personal profile as your Instagram photo. Unfortunately, those are so tiny that you just look like a speck on my screen. Anywho. Yeah. So it's really hard to find you and tag you if you're like – if it's just a person, because I don't know. I remember your branding. I remember your logo. Yeah. I don't remember your face. <laughs> Here is a, there's this uh, store. Corey has that local community group. And uh, we were going through this cute area. If you're ever in Northern Virginia, stop by Occoquan. It's this like riverfront little town. It, does, it feels like you accidentally it's got... It's historic. So it's... It feels... Historic. There's no Kmart. And there is no Walmart. <laughs> and there's a lot of one ways. So you'll right. find yourself heading right on yeah. out if you're careful. It was something that ha- helped with the lumber being floated down the river in the 1800s. Anyway, so they historically protected this little quaint yeah. town. And all the little quaint shops, which are just overpriced trinkets that are adorable, we peruse and we're taking yeah. content of, right? And one of the shops was named Glory B. Super cute. Not a clue what it means, but Glory B was easy to remember. However, when I go to tag them, when I go to tag them, I don't... They didn't have a they didn't have a profile photo. Their profile photo was a picture of a flag on the outside yeah. of the building. It was not a picture of the building. It was just a random flag. I mean the United States flag, but it was there was many yeah. there's many United States flags out there. So when I go to tag their profile, one, Glory B is a very common name. Uh-huh. It was a name of a church, it was a name of a song, it was a name of all these things. I'm trying to like, what is the Glory B that I need to tag yeah. here? Turn it. Last thing I predicted it was the flagpole. <laughs> That was it. And I'm like, wow, that was exceptionally confusing. Yeah. Of course, we tag them. It's all over the place there. Instagram is a different handle than their – not that I can judge – a different handle than yeah. their Facebook page. And I'm trying. I'm, I'm putting in maximum effort to give you I guys know. free publicity. And, and it's I want to say the first person to tap out if they can't find yeah. you – is that customer trying to tag you? <laughs> yeah. I had, I was genuinely trying to create content, but a customer is like, well, I tried, can't find you. That's yeah. All I can do. Right? Yeah. So when you have branding kind of streamlined, which we talk about in that podcast, it makes conversions easier. You're not realizing that you're losing conversions because you never saw them in the first uh-huh. place. But imagine if you streamline this and, and, and more people start ordering, you're going to realize, wow, that really does help people convert. The reason why I had to change from the crumb cookies to the mixing bowl is because people were trying to tag me, but tagging crumbled cookies and guess who got a lot of business in those facebook yeah groups? like the guess Not who quite. lost a <laughs> lot yeah. of business so it was and while i hate re- big rebrands like yeah. that brand refreshes are actually great and that's probably what we're leaning into more here but sometimes you guys have like your profile picture like your your business icons a cow that's hard that's a hard at least cows cookies milk but then Maybe. some of the stuff is kind of dogs <laughs> why would a dog yeah it? that's pretty confusing i would think you make dog treats uh-huh we're simple humans as consumers uh-huh. we don't do a lot of research we just want easy access yeah moving on 
uh, run giveaways to engage your pager group or audience frequently. And we talked about giveaways and the things to look out for, but giving away, how you get them is how you keep them. But giveaways are a nice little jolt of energy because not everyone can afford cookies. And it's a nice way to... And there's some strategy behind mm-hmm. giveaways. If you want your pre-sale to pop off, make the giveaway something that's from the pre-sale. So the people that wanted it who didn't win still get eyes on the prize. What if you did this? What if you said, I'm having a pre-sale. I'm going to forgive one complete order. Somebody yeah. who orders will have their cookie bill paid for by me. Uh-huh. That is an interesting giveaway. You still get some get, give some. Giveaways that have no required entry, no expenditure are going to perform better. Yeah. We like the one where I tag you and a friend and both of you win something. Yeah. That one is a little better. Um, but yeah, giveaways are nice thing, but I'm too busy for giveaways or I don't want to give my products. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, then don't complain that the market's over. You mm-hmm. didn't do everything. You mm-hmm. only did what you wanted to do and you didn't see the results you wanted. So now you don't want to do anything. Listen, when I make a sample mm-hmm. for a photo mm-hmm. and my pre-sale is a month away, those cookies freeze like a gem. Mm-hmm. I was already going to make them. So now I'm not going to let them dry out. I'm actually going to freeze him and he will be my giveaway that I was already making the cookie for. Mm. There was no love lost in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Cookie graveyards? Mm-hmm. How about cookie freezer boxes? Oh. Okay, focused on adding value to local community groups each week. This is this is a big offender. Most of you ain't doing this. <laughs> okay, me and Heather, <laughs> you would have thought we yanked everyone's teeth off of this community this, group. Corey has this community group, which has been... The group is popping all the time. The most popping day is unfortunately Saturday where you can sell your wares. Okay. So Corey and I had a strategize. We were monitoring this for the month of January and February. And we said, the fact that Saturday is the most active day is actually not a good indicator. While it looks good in the metrics, got a lot of posts on Saturday. Yeah. The group engagement tanks that day because it's just lambasted with sales. So it's not a quality day. You don't go to the group to learn information or post a question on Saturday because you're it's so many sales posts that your post yeah. will get trumped or you won't get an answer. So the user, the end user experience on Saturday is horrendous. I I actually don't go to the group and um, I admin the group yeah. on Saturday. So Corinne, I said, what what can we do without constricting the ability to make a sales? Because the sales how can we use this opportunity to, to help us the group. to help the group? So here's what we came up with. Genius. It does qu- require a little... It uh, does. Speaking of time in the saddle, for sure, because that's... But what we said is, like, okay, you guys... Because now Facebook allows each user in a each member to have a, a group uh, profile. Yeah. So we can see the post history. We said, if you want to sell on Saturdays, all I have to do is make one post throughout the week that doesn't have anything to do with sales. It, it could be, I saw the ice cream truck down the road. I saw this flower and I thought it was pretty. This light is out on this road right Does here. Does anybody have a recommendation for a cleaning company? That is all That's the requirement. I don't care were. if you don't need a cleaning company. Just post it. Somebody was like, anything for allergies? And I'm like, I know you yeah. can sell on Saturday mm-hmm. and this is absolutely fine. So, and then comes that. Oh, then we put all the people who sold in the past on post approval. A lot of these people I'd never seen before because because they only they use only the group for sales. Sell. What they don't realize is that, that by forcing them to add value to the group, they'll actually see better conversions on yeah. Saturday. Okay, come this Saturday. Oh my God. The post fly in of people who could care less to read the rules, read the rules, let alone make another post. Yeah. But they're on post approval. So they get declined, they get cited for the rule. Hey, you gotta make one non sales related post. And it has one Saturday is not nearly as popping, but the whole group is better yes. for it. Because when you, now bringing it back to you, here's the altar yeah. call. When you come into a group and you just sell, you are a taker. And the admins are looking for givers. And you are sucking up bandwidth and not adding any value. But on the flip side, if you actually posted in a group consistently uh-huh. adding value and occasionally sold, mm-hmm. you're going to see better results from that post. Because when you engage with somebody in a group, it starts showing you that person's post. Yeah. Now. People buy from those they know, they like, and they trust. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're going to know, like, and trust you from your one buy my pre-sale? But you're Saturday saying, post? but I made posts in local groups, like you said, girls. No, you only did half of the effort. You only sold in a local group. Yeah. You did not make a post about, hey, guys, I just want to let you know this apple orchard mm-hmm. is coming, and it will be fun, and there's strawberry picking, and here's... Maybe make this. Maybe I'll challenge you this. Go post up the fruit seasons because I think we're going into strawberry season and then find the local pick your owns uh, yeah. orchards near you. No, Even no, no, no. That's too much work. I don't have the time. No, I just need a post. It's Saturday. I just need a post and then I'm going to ghost and then I'm going to go to your group and complain that I make no idea. Yeah. I will say I make a 
post on Saturday, but you'll see me throughout the group. And I'm known as the neighborhood cookie lady. Mm-hmm. Because and of not because not of you because selling. Of, yeah. In fact, there's other bakers that try to sell in the group. And I want to be like, but you're only selling. Yeah. You must add value. So this has been our third week of this new role. And I've said it's the times have turned. Refreshing. So much. I want to, the people, and you're like, you're just admins. That's why you say it. No. Because there's so much fewer sales posts, people can spend more time with those posts and get to know the person behind it. That Ask was, the question. That's not Corey tapping. That's the door. That is not my tapping. Please thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are like, but I post in community groups. That's half the effort. That's actually a fourth of the effort. Yeah. You both you post sales posts with no good copy, and you link to your barely website. One, don't link to your website in a group. Uh, it's a reach killer. Yeah. Post a an image. And in the comments, link to uh-huh. it. see how your own posts perform. I don't got to tell you, it's not doing well. Yeah. Um, moving on. That was a big one. And you guys aren't doing very well. Good at it. Uh, this is an even bigger one. Create your own local community group to better facilitate value-added hyper-local community groups in your area. I'm going to say, the hardest thing to do is to create a community group, but the best thing you can do is create a community Corey group. Corey said the statement, and I think about it all the time. She said it. With the community group I've created, that could be my only lead source and I would be booked because they're so valuable. But you're going to create a community group barely. You're not going to add any value to it, you listening to this now. And you're going to say, well, that was a farce. My community doesn't like groups. No, they don't like poorly managed ones. Mm-hmm. That's that's what's true. And it's a lot of work. It's Corey and I are so constantly strategizing this tiny little community group. Work. Yeah, the Saturday thing takes a whole. Corey and I have to. They, did they make the post this week? Oh, <laughs> yeah. somebody, somebody from last year who only sells came in and I had a turn them on post to brew. I had it. Notify them. I'm going to these small businesses. One, it it takes a lot of resources because I don't just want to go and take them. But Corey, them. I don't have any time, and my sales are so slow. Hey, yeah. you just said you don't have any sales, so you got plenty of time, buddy. Yeah, you got plenty yes. of time to hit that baby. I will say the amount of people who have come into this little community group who've tried to create a community group like it and failed. Yeah. 99%. <laughs> it's tough because it's hard. Yeah. It takes an active give, 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 give. I don't even think you're, we're at the, the taken part yet. We're not there. No, yeah. and Corey and I have, and I hate to say this, we probably invested, uh, I think, $2,000 in giveaways, ad spend, and products ordered to facilitate community yeah. experiences. Yeah. And you're like, well, I don't have $2,000. 200 bucks. I don't care. Put your money where your mouth is. If you want to take people's money, put the money back in the market. Uh-huh. That's why Coca-Cola, I went to see a movie the other day, Civil War, crazy movie. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, the entire intro ad, one, I was 15 minutes late to the movie because I had to make a return. But the movie didn't start for another 15 minutes. It was 30 minutes of ads and 99% of the ads was about Coca-Cola. And I sat there drinking my Coca-Cola. And I said, my dad goes, and I said, wow, that is truly marketing. They have us. I already had my Coke. Yeah. The movie's already getting started and they're still advertising Coke. Yeah. Crazy. Right. But you don't have any time. You can't go to a business and grab lunch and take pictures of I know. That's, that's free 50. I know. Free 50. <laughs> free, 50. free 50. We went to this Thai place, of which the place I love. And I say to the waitress who knows us, and I say, I'm going to take some photos. I'm going to post them in a local community group. You know what she said? Desserts on me. Would you mind adding our sticky rice? Yeah. Our sticky rice, which is phenomenal, to the post. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Was that a win-win? And now, you know what? She, because, <laughs> because we tagged that Thai place on our social media, she has figured out that Corey sells cookies. Yeah. And Corey, guess what? Gave her some cookies the last time. She didn't eat them because she thought they were too pretty to eat, but that's okay. <laughs> she gave us a free dessert uh-huh. last time that she made on yeah. the So it's building those relationships, but any relationship, you can't go to a man or a woman and say, marry me, having not known them. <laughs> but with your sales, you guys seem to think that that's appropriate. Yeah. Buy them from me. There's no relationship there. How dare you not buy from me? <laughs> I am going to complain about you. Sure you <laughs> Okay, this one, this one you're going to hate. Did you create an email list to send a monthly newsletter on MailChimp, Flowdesk, Constant Contact? Yeah. Best time I, to build a tree? 20 years ago. Next best time? On Constant Contact today. Today. There is very little, re- but I ever, I don't have, I don't have a list. Oh, start one. If you email to two people, that's a list. I want to tell you the hardest thing to do is learn something new. I hate it. I hate to, it. Yeah, I think we talked about it last week. It's gross. <laughs> it's annoying. <laughs> it's disgusting. Learning an email news. I, I, You know what I was thinking? I have been in Lightroom so much, I just know where to go uh-huh. because I've done it so many times. Uh-huh. But that first few times, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just blabbing about in this app. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. 
you trip for it. Like I uh, Photoshop. I was even looking at Photoshop and I was like, this is ugly. This is yeah. an ugly app. Like every button is a little hieroglyphic. It's daunting. <laughs> You're Googling what the hieroglyphics yeah. mean. But that little, every Google, every, how do I, how do I reverse this image? Then you're like, oh, go to image, go to transform, uh-huh. go to flip. But like, that's one more knowledge that you have to trip forward. Email new senders. That sounds complicated. It which is not. Get in there. But Hever, I don't know. Corey's son called me Hever for a long time. He said the over the other day, today, this we morning. We did? And I, wonder, I almost said something, but he's so embarrassed about it. So I was like, we'll just let it be <laughs> Hever, I, I don't have, I don't know what to send them. Oh, you know that Apple Orchard post you just made in that group? There's yeah. your content uh-huh. for your newsletter. And at the bottom, put in your upcoming classes, your upcoming pre-sale, mm-hmm. or your upcoming custom availability. My mm-hmm. favorite thing to do is make my content go as far as it can go. It goes far, buddy. I see It you. goes far and it goes wide. <laughs> <laughs> but really getting juice from that content. You'll see, like, Corey posted something in the Cookie College, and I said, hey, can I take this content and repurpose it for the Cookie College Instagram and Facebook page, of which I'm trying to also, and then guess who shared it? Sugar Cookie Marketing's page. <laughs> and Sugar Cookie Marketing's Instagram shared it to the Make It Down podcast. And yeah. So it's really making that content. Get squeeze some juice out of it. You put the effort in, squeeze the juice out of it, because that is the type of marketing that produces results. Yes. Uh, actually emailing that list consistently each month with value added content along with your sales. I know Mm. that's, that's work and effort there. Yeah. AG one, that green powder. Yeah. Okay. They, that's the only thing they sell, right? They sell it in either a travel packet form or in a bin. (laughs) That's it. So what do you think? They email me constantly. I'd actually unsubscribe. Uh, cause I was like, yeah, I'm already spending (laughs) the money. But they email constantly on the ways of each ingredient in the screen powder, how it affects your body positively. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, and then ways to implement exercise to go along with this healthy. Like, it's all the content that's value-added. Granted, they're also trying to sell me, but they're telling me things that I want to know. There's value behind the sale. It's not just asking, do you want to have this pint-sized thing shipped to you? Yeah. Uh, The... I don't actually use the Robinhood app. It's an investment yeah. app, but it's great. Like you can do a roundup thing. It's great for if you're just getting into investing, but I had somehow I'd signed up for their newsletter called Snacks. I don't know. It's called oh, yeah. Snacks. But every morning you get a little breakdown of what happened in the, the markets the day before and what to expect. Yeah. But it's just an investing app. What can an investing app tell me? It can't tell me how to invest. That's illegal. But yeah. what can an investing app? They just tell me how the market. I read that email every morning. It's how I know butter prices. <laughs> Skyrocketing. No, they went down 5%. Down, down, down. Egg price is up 4%. Skyrocketing. <laughs> we are not saving here. But that is how you – so when people tell me, well, I just don't know what to send, uh, sign up for any newsletter ever and read it. Yeah. That's what – that is the strategy. Uh-huh. Right? Created – have you created social accounts on all the major social players, Facebook pages and groups, LinkedIn pages and groups, Instagram and threads, Nextdoor and Google Business Profile, YouTube, TikTok. But I don't want to learn anything. things. So we're trying to steal my data. <laughs> most, of my, <laughs> she's a team. Uh, most of my business is on Facebook, so that's where I like to give How do you know your business isn't on Instagram? Some people, surprisingly, have most of their business coming from yeah. Instagram. Some people are really good at LinkedIn. Some people just absolutely use next door to the biggest ability uh-huh. it can. And some and Corey gets a lot from Google Business Profile. Oh, I'm going to say that I that's next to groups and Facebook. Awesome yeah. lead source. But I don't, I don't have time. Great. You don't have time. That's the reason. That's fine. Just say I don't have time to be successful. Yeah. Say the whole sentence with your whole chest, Ariana uh-huh. Grande. I do not have time to be successful, so I would like to complain about my lack of success because I don't put the time needed to invest. We're not done with my list. Oh, wow. No, no, no. Wow. Started teaching local classes, cookies, cakes, whatever. Yeah. Start them. Uh, I mean, honestly. People uh, have her. People don't want to take classes. I'm sorry. We just destroyed the industry, apparently, by pushing out classes. So apparently, apparently they want to teach them, but you're teaching your competitor. No. Corey and I have actually taught classes for years. years. Hundreds and hundreds. And I have people. And one sells. Barely. Yeah. As a pastime. Uh Uh-huh. It must be horrible teachers. But no, what they actually do is they wanted to sign up for a fun thing to do on a Saturday. They didn't want to take your business. And if they did, who cares? Think about how many industries offer classes. There's wreath making succulent and growing crocheting yeah. big fluffy blanket crocheting uh-huh. there's a, st- a brick and mortar at the most expensive mall in our area it makes rugs rugs you can go and make a rug yeah the fluffy rug making <laughs> there's so many industries that offer classes it's not just 
cookie bakers. Mm. And I want to say the buy-in and the amount of time it takes to learn cookies is why people aren't cookie bakers. It's not like you were their one secret to learning. They could have gotten on YouTube. They just were looking for a fun day. I love to sign up for classes. Uh-huh. I'm not selling sourdough, but I love taking the sourdough class. Yeah, Corey, Corey will take her. Didn't you in some? Weren't you in that some and Ash supposed to go to a farm? Okay, we were, yeah. Assembly but, class. <laughs> they closed down. <laughs> too many classes. <laughs> <laughs> they taught too many flower assembly people. Um, but yes, offer those new products. Well, my market doesn't sustain classes. I bet you are not marketing it correctly. I want to say one post. I, this is what I see a lot of people Would anybody be interested? In yes. <laughs> you use so much of your audience's energy really? asking it if they would be interested in something. And then you're like, so many people said, yeah, I, half of those people are your family and they want to support you. Uh-huh. So they're going to tell you yes. Yeah. How many people came to our first class? None. We canceled it. How many people came to our second class? Four. It was less than half that yeah. needed to come. You know how many classes we've had to teach to book out? A ton. But if we said, listen, I taught one class, how to cancel it. I'm not teaching class. You know how many or, or, thousands? Or you taught one in December yeah, and then tried to teach another one in January. Remember we call it the dry J months. These months are harder, but we always tell people license to print money, uh, October, November, December, work for every dollar, yeah. January, March, yeah. April. You're literally doing it to get your name out into the community that you teach classes so it gets easier. How am I going to say? Corey and I, we're getting to the point of selling a class. It's great. It's only 10 per class, right? But then in July one year, nobody signed up. What if we had pulled the plug? We were right. selling out of classes. What if we let July We've dictate? too many people. This oversaturated area that we're in, we've taught maybe 400. <laughs> it's a funny thing. We taught a class uh, last month, and we're at $78 a class yeah. ticket. And the lady's like, well, yeah, you're cheaper than everybody else. And I said, oh, no. Yeah. We're cheaper than everybody yes. else. I raise my prices. Yeah. So, yeah. So, even then, there's differentiation within the market. At the end of the day, there's many, many, many Mercedes dealerships in our area. Mm. You're likely going to go to the one that makes you feel better or that is closer or that has different amenities. Yeah. That is going to be – that doesn't matter. Absolutely. They're all selling the exact yeah. same car. They're, not, not, they're selling the exact same I car. I know. They can't even really flex on pricing because they're all dictated by the Yeah, the Toyota 4Runner came out, yeah. just dropped. Look, looks good. amazing. Yeah. They're selling the same car. Some people are selling it for $97,000. Uh-huh. The $97,000 one was on hold. There's a $90,000 one out there. No, yeah. ninety seven on hold. Well, that other Toyota dealership started selling it before our Toyota dealership. <laughs> We're out of the yeah. market. Close up shop. <laughs> Uh, have you sold at a vendor or craft market and did so consistently? Yeah. There are people, there are farmer's markets that make you sign up for the whole summer. Uh-huh. And I think that consistency, forcing the hand of consistency, because what I see is people, like, I tried a vendor market. There's a cookie or a down, five booths down to the left behind a dumpster. And I don't want the competition. Yeah. And they're charging so much less. So of course, everyone went over there. If you want to see negative, negative things, mm-hmm. that's all you'll see. So Heather says, if you're going to buy a red car, a red Toyota 4Runner. You're only, you're only going to see red Toyota 4Runners mm-hmm. on the road. Mm-hmm. You're like, wow, I really like that car. If you want to see people taking the market from you, that's all you're going to see. Confirmation bias. What you want to see is the only thing you will start seeing. Yeah. But you don't realize that they're priced at a such a less rate than you that people associate quality comparison there mm-hmm. that yours might be the higher quality. I hate, I hate that that, that thought in my brain when i look at it close online and i'm like you're selling that for 20 dollars, but this company over here is selling that same thing but for 80 dollars, that 80 dollars got to be better yeah it, it's just it's how we're conditioned yeah that mercedes is more expensive than toyota mercedes must have more buttons yeah. but you you can hold the person who's priced cheaper who has more people coming they're priced cheaper i meant to tell you um there's a lady who sells a baked good locally to Corey. And she and Corey's like, yeah, wow, she charges so much less than me. Guess who raised her prices and set a minimum on yeah. today? Yeah. Because they're, they're, you don't need to worry about them, man. The market will handle it. Uh-huh. They'll either book out, which is awesome. They're working on a razor-thin margin, and they can operate that way. Yeah. Or they'll get out of the game, or more than likely, they'll raise their prices. Yeah. Because they are, they're just too busy. Uh-huh. Right? So, But you want to blame them so you don't have to change. I yeah. don't want games. I don't want to do a crap market. Another thing, I'll see people announce that they're going to be at a market. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll post about it all week. I'm like, good job. And then they won't go. Then they'll Sorry, really guys. Start. I won't be able to make it family time. The other thing. And I'll be like, what? we were planning for it all week. Granted, I'm nowhere near them. But you guys have invited me to like your races, so I do. <laughs> yeah, that's a rough one. But then you can't turn around and be like, you know, tied markets, they don't work. 
no, the market tried you and you didn't. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah. Yeah. But then I also see like people are like, well, I, you know, I tried it one time. I tried it one time more. Uh-huh. You got to do things consistently. You got to do things for years. Coca-Cola is still advertising. It's been around for over 100 years. Yeah. Moving on. Have you attempted multiple pop-ups both at home and at local businesses like cafes, wineries, breweries? Uh, well, I don't want people to come to my house. Okay, great. Then, but don't complain about yourselves though. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Uh-huh. Well, I live in an apartment. Okay, then find a cafe. Well, they don't want me. Then find a brewery. Well, they don't want me. Then find a... Okay, I'm not here to... You don't want my life jacket. <laughs> don't... You're drowning, but yeah. don't ask me to yeah. help you. I can only help you so much. Uh-huh. Well, Heather, I, I, you know, I have stuff to do in the weekends. Then don't complain about your sales. Yeah. Well, I got family time in the weekend. Then don't complain about your sales. You don't have time, so don't expect that people should buy from you when you finally make time. Yeah. But Heather, you you know, you still got to see your family. Great, but just don't come to the group and complain about yeah. your low sales. Go see Hang your family. Hang out with your family. Say, I them. have lower sales because I like hanging yeah. out with my family on Saturday. Uh-huh. Absolutely. I like going to my mom's house on Saturdays. Uh-huh. And that's when car shows are. And I don't go to any of them. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, and then people are like, do you have no car? Yeah, I have none. Uh-huh. Because I like hanging out with my family. Uh-huh. And I know that I'm the cause. Yeah. Solicited partnership with corporate clients. That is, I know we did the Main Street collab. That's actually going to a client giving, but you can message and email and just drop by or, it, you know, start forming relationship mm-hmm. with companies. Like Corey and I, we'll go to the same restaurant 50 billion times. Yeah. I like it. I like consistency there. But that forms a relationship. And then you can turn around and say, hey, would you guys be interested in this? Yeah. It's a corporate girly era. Mm-hmm. Joined a local networking group for lead generation. Listen, I. Corey's a beaner through and through. Beaner. I. <laughs> Give or gain. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's BNI. BNI is called Business Networking International. <laughs> it's not just here. It's absolutely everywhere. But BNI is in things like it. They have the polka dot powerhouse for, it's a ladies group. There's like local groups that people will just randomly make. Mm-hmm. We have the collectives here. Mm-hmm. They always have meetups. Uh, people want to recommend you. Also chambers. Before you say, oh, yeah, it exist in my area. The chambers do. They're like by the government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many ways to meet Face to face, and that is overwhelming and Mm -hmm. causing anxiety. Mm -hmm. But you can meet face to face the people you want to sell to. Mm -hmm. And all they need to do, you don't sell to them. You say, Hey, I'm doing this, really working on corporate orders. If you have anything, here's what it looks like, blah. That's it. In a local group, you'll see them tag you. Can you imagine? Can you imagine going to a beaner? I can tell when a company mm-hmm. signs up for a Absolutely. local group because they'll people are just hawking their wares. Absolutely. Can you imagine going to a BNI? Let's say it's got ten people, all represent ten businesses because it's a business yeah. networking group, and each of them you print their logo on a cookie and hand it to them when you get to the meeting that week. Yeah. When you get to the cult that week, you hand them the cookie. But however, however, no. No, there's none of those. Not even chambers. They make one. Start it. Start it. Little me. Odds are there's some businesses in your area. You're one of them. Make it. Start it. Yeah. Even if it's two, three, five. Consistently over time, if you constantly market it, you will have more people join uh-huh. it. Uh huh. But it's just very, very easy to say. I I have social anxiety. Okay, and so your sales have social anxiety. That's fine. Yeah. But just say the whole sentence. Uh-huh. I don't like talking to people, and thus I make fewer sales, and I'm okay with that. Have you donated classes and cookies to local charity organizations? I don't donate anything. I've never gotten anything back from it. That one time you donated, that one time you didn't get anything yeah. back from it. That's not consistent. There's not always good places to donate stuff, but there's some great opportunities. That's a whole strategic giving giving is a whole strategy of yeah. businesses to one, connect with the community. You don't even have you could essentially pipe a charitable event through your cookie thing uh-huh. and just collect diapers for mothers in need. Yeah. Absolutely. Ab- but 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 I don't like giving away product. Don't give away product. Give away time. Give away effort. Uh-huh. Do that be give uh-huh. away your organizational skills. But yeah, it's very easy to say one time this one time I donated something to this teachers group and I never got no sense and then do it anymore. Okay. Okay. Well then, but say the whole thing and I never get donate to charity. So I never see any charitable returns on my investment. Yes. Day. Moving on. Created a website and implemented SEO best practices to rank that website in Google and Bing searches. I don't, websites are confusing. And so your sales are. Your yeah. sales are confusing. Yeah. Whatever excuse you want to give me is the excuse that your sales are low. Websites help with conversions. Corey's dogging me on hers. I'm Dog. working on it. It looks good. It looks good. And websites also add a... Um, Layer of trust. Yes, yes. What yeah. word? There's a fancy word for them. It's um, something in my mind. Trust. 
Um, okay, I'm brand sure. loyalty. Maybe. Brand. But it also helps with conversions. One, it corrals all your product offerings from your sporadic Facebook page feed into yeah. one location. So when somebody clicks your website, they can peruse, purchase, and get a receipt confirmation. That's conversions right uh-huh. there. It's pretty hard on Facebook. And that's why Corey's getting mad at me, is to say, hey, guys, I know you barely saw this post in your feed. Please <laughs> click here and go to this job form and fill this out. And, fill it, and then The I'll- problem with like the job form is you have to put in a little bit of information to get to where my pricing uh-huh. is. And I can tell people are like, this is a lot of but you'll get my, my email yeah. before I find out. I hate, I hate an email yeah. before I know what the price is. But a website kind of, one, it adds, uh, you know, you got about pages, you've got picture proof. It, I don't know. We're very conditioned to think that a business with a website is a legitimate business, yeah. even if it's not. That's why you can see so many scams yeah. happen because they made a website. Uh-huh. And you're like, well, you must have a website. It really does help. And, Corey says, I know I'm losing sales because I don't have a website. But she didn't come to Sugar Cookie Marketing Group and be like, my competition just sucks. Yeah. And they took all my leads. No, you know what took your leads? My lack of effort. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know. To blame Heather. Yeah. <laughs> so you make a website and you're like, okay, where are my leads? No, man. That's the beginning. Search yeah. engine optimization is a billion, billion dollar industry where people optimize Produce content if you started seeing Corey's been writing blog posts for us. Later. <laughs> and you consistently market and you get Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools and Bing Webmaster Tools. And you, I don't even know, so far I never. There's over 200 indicators to Google if a website is healthy, people clicking to it. So that means you have to market on social media. How long do they stay it? on? How long? Is How your, many clicks do they take on the website? Yeah. When do they bounce from the website? Uh-huh. Does your website load too slow? Uh-huh. Does your website have no hierarchical text on it to tell the bot crawler? And you're like, well, guys, this is really technical. Buckle up, buddy. People are making millions of dollars from SEO. And you're like, that's too complicated. I'm not tech savvy. Have yeah. a, I'm not tech savvy, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Okay, and your sales are not tech okay, savvy Okay, so either. say because I'm unwilling to learn. Mm-hmm. If our 80-some-odd-year-old grandmother is willing to learn an iPhone. Can I, can I brag on Rayfan for a second? Brag on her. She, she likes to take the initial, it didn't work heavy, and I don't yeah. know what to do. Sometimes, oftentimes, I'll fix it. But sometimes I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do this. I hate when you do, mm-hmm. you pull the rug out from mm-hmm. under us. Everyone's all dependent on me to solve their problems. And when I'm like, you know what? I don't want to solve this I one. I know. And they're like, you literally <laughs> keeping your nose in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, figure out your letting it come out of your fingers. <laughs> doing it for me. So everyone's like, how do you do it? And I said, my hands have a gift. And I Googled it. Heather will Google something right in front of you on how to do something. Well, you know, Google <laughs> says, <laughs> click to the right. What are we doing when we t- have I don't know. the internet. Yeah, I'm just telling me that. I even asked, and they were like, you had to go look at it in an encyclopedia. But what uh, if new information uh, came out? That's the only get told. <laughs> uh, Ruth Ann, we bought her a Google Home, Corey and I did, probably five or six yeah. years ago, and it lives plugged into her wall, right? Yeah, she loves it. It took her a long time to get used to it, but now she, every morning, she's asking so that thing, the weather. Yeah. I think she's married to him, Mr. Google. <laughs> and the other day, she likes to stream this Christian... Like old timey, yeah, something. Radio. It's been a radio station for as long as I've been. She's always listened to it on the radio. Now it has no more tass- towers left, so you have to stream it <laughs> digitally. So she goes every morning and she says, "Play WFME on the radio." Like I had to write it yeah. down for one time. So then there was an update over the weekend where that trigger word no longer played the right radio station. It played like some uh, jazzy thing. She was dying. <laughs> she was she was passing away. So she was like, hey, can you – and I said, listen, one, the guys are hammering, so Google can't hear me very well. Uh-huh. I'll just figure it out later. Came downstairs the next morning, and she's pointing weirdly at the wall where the Google Home is. So what are you doing? She's like, turn it up. It's playing the radio station. And I said, what did you do? And she's like, I spent the last hour and a half Googling. Apparently, it was a big change on the website, and we had to say a different set of words to get it. And I said, you know what? Right there, you're 85 years old. You had a problem. Yeah. No one solved it for you. You went to Google. You read websites until yeah. you finally found the solution and implemented it. We are living in the future. You have it at your fingertips. Wait, Heather, I'm not tech savvy. My, if my grandma's tech savvy, you're tech savvy. Mm-hmm. If my grandmother, who has no concept of technology, can get a Google Home to trigger the right words to play her yeah. radio station, you can do it too. What it is, and this is going to hurt, you're lazy. You're not not tech savvy. You're lazy. You don't like sitting with the problem of learning a new technology long enough. I know that offended a bunch of people, but you know it's true. I want to say that's I am one of those people. Mm-hmm. 
I am. I am. That's why Corey gets mad when I don't help her with her. I don't want to use my brain cells. (laughs) And that's fine. (laughs) You can be lazy, but just say my leads are lazy as well. My sales are lazy because I am. I'm not tech savvy because I don't like dealing with technology because I'm lazy about it. And you're fine to say that, but it's when you come to the group and say, I'm not lazy. Everyone else is a loser that takes my leads. But then I look over and it turns out you don't like websites because you find them too complicated. Yeah. You don't have... I'll say I'm incentivized by money. My husband knows that. Mm. When the yearbook team brought me on and didn't pay me, I was like, Corey was the most like, it is what it is. When they give her like thousands of dollars to do this class, I've never seen, Corey's like, move out of my way. I'm building no, I'm building, (laughs) Corey, all Saturday we're at my mom's house, Corey busts out a laptop. (laughs) She's like like rendering things and downloading and uploading. And I'm like, wow, where was that? I've for- learned the whole software yeah. because the leads, the money behind it is pushing me to. Now, if Corey wasn't in, had no incentive with money, then this wouldn't get done. She could say, well, I'm just not tech savvy. It just wasn't easy to access uh-huh. the thing. But what's behind your leads is the money. Uh-huh. And if that can if that can incentivize you, nothing we're going to say is going to yeah. do. If you want your pity party, you're going to get it. You're yeah. just not going to get it in this group. Uh-huh. Moving on to the altar call. Did you create a Google My Business Google Business profile to capture more maps leads? Like Corey said, that is one of her her second highest lead source is a Google Business profile. And you're going to tell me, well, I don't want my I don't want my address listed. Then you set it up wrong. You know what? You can hide your address. Yeah. But I don't want people showing up my door. They can't show up at the door if you hide your address if you set it up correctly. Yeah. But I tried it and it got suspended. Because you set it up incorrectly and you lazily took the easy way out of just blaming. Well, uh-huh. I don't know. It didn't work for me. Uh-huh. I took a look at my Google My Business, Google Business Profile they to change the name. name. And uh, my competitors, my friend, friend frenemies, <laughs> have like five photos. Do you want to know how many photos are you, online? I think it's a part of your workflow. When you take a photo for a product, you upload it. 1,400. 1,400. <laughs> but that goes to show you that's why you're dominating in this space. Yeah. You know how many people find sugar cookie classes from Google My Business? Oh, a ton. Yeah. I can tell when we're having a class yeah. on the peak <laughs> Um, But yeah, sure. You don't want to be on Google because you want to hide your address. That's just, your one, it's misinformation. You're saying or it wrong. it got suspended if you don't want to figure it out. They want me to do a video guide. That's, again, because you're set up incorrectly. Well, I don't know how to set it up correctly. I uh, Google it. Yeah. Literally Google it. They even Google even tells you how to do it correctly. To make it even easier for you, we have set up the cookie college. The I cookie college takes you step by step. It's hand-holding. We hold your little baby hand mm-hmm. as you walk from a toddler, from a newborn to a toddler, to a tween, to an adult business owner. Yeah, that's what the cookie college is. Like. Well, I can find all that stuff online. Yeah, sure you can. Yeah. You get it. I would love for you to save your money and not give it to me. But if you want me to hold your hand and you want us to make it about bakers. If we know inherently, I know I'm lazy. Mm-hmm. So I have to buy things. I have to invest in things that are going to help me be less lazy. It's so funny. I was uh, talking to a member of the cookie college and we we're just talking about billing information or something. Credit card expired. And she was like, hey, she, this is how I, you know, we had finished the conversation. Yeah. She comes back and she's like, hey, I'm sure you're wondering why. Because she pays for you. You got to read it. You got to read it. Can you pull it up? Yeah, I can. It was so. so good. If you're wondering what the cookie college is, it is done with you marketing. You can hire a marketing firm for $1,000. That's called done for you marketing. The cookie college does it with you. It saves you a ton of money. But there is a little bit of, I can't say that I'm lazy. And you're going to have to take some of the classes. You're going to take some of the courses. You're going to set up the GMB course, your Google business profile course. You're going to go through the newsletter course. You're going to go through the photography course. You're going to go through the copy course. And what we just have done it is brought it to you in an easy to digest way that has bakeries in mind. Yeah. So this member, I'll leave her anon. She was like, she had signed up for the year. If you sign up for the year, you get two months free. Mm -hmm. And this is what she, so I was helped her. I'm like, oh, you're all set. And she's like, awesome. Thank you so much. I know I'm not taking the classes as much as one might him at all. Uh, But after 14 years, my business is stable and I like it that way. So one, so why one might ask, do I pay $620 annually for the cookie college? It's because you and Corey and the amazing community you all created. It's like having an advisory board all on my own. And even if I don't plan to do TikTok or classes, I'm I'm positive I'm leaving money on the table. But a girl's got to sleep and see her family. I appreciate that you keep us up to date on what's going on in the cookie world. So many thanks to you and your flip side. Because I always say I see you on the (laughs) Uh, y'all make the business of sugar cookies way more fun and a whole lot less salty than most corners of the internet. That 
Cookie College Facebook group, which we did not predict, became the accountability pod of many people who joined, and it makes them less lazy. Yeah. It makes them say, wow. Because it's, that's, it's contagious. Yes. You see someone that's a good word. teaching their first class. They are on the, – they're vibing. The mm-hmm. hype – it makes you so feel so good about it that you feel confident in yourself that you could do the same thing. That group is so brainwashed to have a growth mentality that when someone's like, "Hey, my sales are low," the comment oh. section is nothing, no pity parties. No, they're like, "Let's let's see like, what we can." Here's add something to I tried. Yeah. Here's something I saw. Like, uh, we had the it was called the Sweet Sugar Singer class. It was our first class. It was kind of branded to our theme, which is actually Taylor Swift. And I was like, hey, guys, what are you guys seeing with these sales? Instead of, whoa, it's me. It was like, hey, here's what I tried. I ran a Facebook ad. I'm actually going to try to move this class later in yeah. the year. I'm actually going to take this class and turn it into DIY kits. Someone's like, I sold out. Someone's like, how did you do it? Here's what I did. Yeah. And that's, that is just, just tons of comments of people with that right growth mindset who don't let pity parties yeah. run I saw someone mind. said, I'm going to have to cancel the class. I'll be honest. I didn't market it. Ah, oh, I loved it when I read that too. I was like, thank you. Thank you yeah. for taking accountability. I canceled class. I was too busy. It didn't market yeah. well, so I'll just move uh-huh. it to another one. And to have to, those two mindsets is the difference between someone who's going to close down and someone who's going to be successful in business. Uh-huh. Because that, if you want to see negativity, you want to see no sales, you're going to surround yourself with others who see no sales. If you want to see growth, if you want to see projections and profits, you're going to surround yourself with people, whether it be in the cookie college or in the marketing group or in any other group you're in, you're going to kind of drown out those that you don't like Mm -hmm. and you're going to focus on the ones you do. Absolutely. Have you added content to your social media strategy? Video content, Instagram Reels, TikTok, oh, YouTube done, Shorts. Man. I was, I, well, oh, this, in my like. You know what I? You know salad. why I made this list so long? Because then I only went down to podcasts recorded in October last year. Oh, wow. I didn't go for the two years <laughs> prior. I just want people to be like, you're not tapping a tip of this yeah. iceberg before you come to this group and yeah. say nothing's working. So I only have a couple left, okay. but there one. Have you added video content? Corey and I have been preaching I, for the last two years that video content is actually appreciated more on yeah. these platforms. Listen, if there was someone who didn't want to jump on the video train, it, is Corey. it was I. I had every excuse in the book. There's a tree outside my window. It's very dark and it makes my cookies look bad. The way the camera is, I don't have a nice camera. I don't have a good stand, so there's nothing holding it. I don't know. I don't want to edit it. It's too hard. I don't want to learn a new app to edit it in. I don't want to invest in. I don't want to have to learn Premiere Pro. In the cookie, and this is where it turned out. In the cookie college, we did a challenge in June last year, and it was the Really Reels Challenge, where every day for 30 days. You had to post one video piece of content. Didn't I could care less what it was. Uh-huh. Could have been a picture of you waving your hand as long as <laughs> yeah. it's not before, right? And that's when you started doing it. So Corey takes a challenge every day for 30 days. It performed so well that for the rest of the year, she produced video content almost every day. Yeah. And now the, the Facebook page is 111,000 followers. The Instagram is 30,000. From that consistent video content – but I have a, the sun is not shining and I go to record that thing. I want to tell you, sometimes my videos still upload. Forget the sound. The <laughs> video you posted today was very cute. Thanks. It was a cookie class kit and she had, had pulled said, up the cutter what? and then pulled It'd in the fun, cookie. It would be more fun if I did the, did the cookie instead of just put the little picture yes, on it. I thought that was very cute. There's a French fry and people think it is a weird <laughs> object. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is a crinkle fry. I want to, yeah. In people, I don't want to get on TikTok. I don't know how to do it. The amount of cookiers that I see who have maybe a great presence on Instagram, but are like dwindling on TikTok. Like if you're saying, I don't want to go where bakers are, go to TikTok. They're not there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like yeah. now the people who are popular on Instagram got there long before the algorithm changed. Like, okay, TikTok's there. Uh-huh. Then, no, TikTok's going to be banned. YouTube shorts is there. I don't have a YouTube channel. Okay. Facebook stories Reels, are there. Yeah. I don't like it. Okay, yeah. if you want it drawn, buddy, there's no lap jacket I can throw out there, video content that's going to show you. Amen. Even I said a core like every Monday, we had the Monday morning marketing meeting with the mirror. A lot of times. <laughs> and I said, oh man, our Facebook page is, our Instagram is growing. Are you stopping with the story, or the videos? And she's like, oh, I didn't post last week. Yeah. Like, oh, I can see it. Yeah. I can see a direct result of that laziness. Uh-huh. But I could say the algorithms, they must be changing. There's too many bakers on Instagram. <laughs> they took my views. Uh, have you added or tested new products to your lineup to supplement and differentiate from customs? Yeah. That includes cookie classes. That includes 
I saw somebody talking about whatever a cronut was. You know, brownies. What was that brownie thing? That I saw was it. Trendy. Oh, it was a bronut. A bronut. Oh, yeah. A brownie note. <laughs> yeah, cookie cakes. Yeah. Someone uh, I had said, oh, because I was tired of all the negativity. I said in the group on Sunday, what's one thing you've implemented this year that has moved the needle? And someone's like, oh, I have for a six pound cookie cake. And it's a cookie. Six pounds? And it has Bury cookies me on in it. That. I said, you had me at six pounds. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, they're really heavy. <laughs> but like, she's like, and then someone's like, I've offered delivery. That has been my differentiator. Yeah. Some people are like, I've offered cookie classes. Some people said, I've offered uh, Heather Campbell Bookshare, murderer. Yeah. <laughs> Event planner. She said, I offered cakelets. I said, what is a cakelet? That's a door. She's like, I mean, if the word that it is. I said, well, I don't know what it is, but I want it yeah. in my life. Uh-huh. But all these supplemental things, well, I just sell cookies. Have our eyes just do customs. Yeah. I don't want to sell it. I don't want to learn anything. I don't want to learn tarot. And then, okay, then your sales are sluggish because you are sluggish. Uh-huh. Have you removed underperforming products from your lineup to reduce choice overload? Yeah. Yes. Having too many choices, having to put that in storage, all your Hover, hover. What's worked for me has worked for me. I mean, you're the one complaining that your sales are low. Yeah. So it's not working for yeah. you. It's just been what you've always done, uh-huh. and you think that makes me wrong. Uh huh. Um, have you upgraded camera equipment for better product photography? I'm talking camera editing software, backdrops, prop lighting. Yeah, I mean, a core backers is an investment. It is an investment. They are not cheap. But does that make me more sales having them in my arsenal? A thousand. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Always. Almost a hundred percent. When I see that, what was me? I made no sales, and I click over that profile. I'm like, these pictures are not. Yeah, these pictures are low effort. But no, Heather, it's all I have, and you have low effort. You there's people building backdrops uh-huh. that can't afford it, so they build them. And there are people taking their iPhone and taking iPhone classes to maximize the capabilities yeah. of the photographer. iPhone photography is ridiculously nice. It's insane. It's, rid- yeah. it's ridiculous. Uh-huh. But also, take some of your cooking money, buy a mirrorless or DSLR camera, buy a refurbished one. Uh-huh. They're still amazing. I want to say the I had to teach the high schoolers how to take photos and edit them. Mm-hmm. With the I can tell just from what they mm-hmm. uploaded. I said, you you listen. You did not. Mm-hmm. This is not it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, said, I can't see one person here. Yeah. Yeah. It's so crazy. And that's why the biggest class in the cookie college is the photography. The longest one. class. It's the most comprehensive because it makes such a big difference. Yes. But ever, ever, I, there's no excuse on that one. Get yeah. your butt into a seat and YouTube ISO, shutter speed, and aperture and find out, figure out the relationship yeah. of those three. Uh-huh. And apply it because now on my Samsung phone, I have pro camera options yeah. and it allows me to edit yeah. those three things. Uh, and even editing software that comes on your phone is almost, dare I say, like Lightroom. Then I see people like, why well, don't I pay for Lightroom? You don't want to pay $10? You don't want to pay $10? Listen, Lightroom on mobile, free. Free, free. the bird. But when they say, people are like, oh, just change the sink. Well, I don't have the access to that. I don't have that paper. You I, spent $20 at Chick-fil-A like, last I night. I downloaded it, and I don't know what to do in there. Mess with it. Figure Mess with it, it and out. find some, the things that make the photo something you like to look at. Get in there, put exposure at that, and blind your eyes. But the sun, the sun isn't available. I work all day, and when I get home, it's dark. Okay, listen. I have the same issue. There are lights that you can get with diffusers that make a realistic sun replacement. But that takes effort. Well, it's expensive. No, you can get them on Amazon for, like, nothing. Yeah. But you can get your excuses easier. But if you want to live in your dark closet corner mm-hmm. with and no And you want to blame that. And then you want to say your sales are low. <laughs> just don't post in our group. Go post anywhere else. You'll get a ton of uh, attention. Yeah. Uh, have you upgraded your packaging? Custom business cards, boxes, branded stickers, ribbon, et cetera. Corey? Okay. The packaging is expensive. No, Corey goes to like Hobby Lobby dollar section. I don't know if there's one. And she gets stickers. <laughs> and then she gets the boxes that are white and bland and from Amazon. We buy them in a pack of like a million. And she puts the stickers on them. And every time we pass them in my class, someone's like, oh, I like the stickers. It was extremely low cost custom packaging. Yeah. And then she gets tool, like little ribbons. Yeah. Corey actually, if there's a gift, like if somebody's having a birthday party, Corey would be like, can I take all the ribbons? I'd be like, can you, um, can you not rip? Can you fold uh, that bag up nicely, but please don't cause an indent in it? Are you going to be using that bag? Yeah. Is that box, is that something you're married to right but now? But I don't know graphic design. In fact, we actually sell templates on business cards in the Google College. But if you want more excuses, then go to Canva and just type in business card. Yeah. And template. On yes. That. But it's too expensive. Print it down on, print it down on a harder cardstock using a printer. Harder I don't have pounds. a printer. What do you want from us? Yeah. What do you want? I can't pick you up off the ground every time a little little hurdle comes in when you want to trip over it. You yeah. want to trip over it. You uh-huh. don't want to trip over it. 
I'm almost done. This is the last one. Implemented a CRM system and follow up frequently with past clients on their order occasions. The number one person to buy from you? Cheapest lead is one somebody who's already bought from you. Absolutely. It's the warmest. But people are like, I have no leads. Uh, have you sold before? Because those are all warm leads that you could re-warm up. Uh-huh. But I don't. I didn't collect their emails. We'll start collecting it now. But I don't remember. I, listen. Listen, Linda. If you don't want to, we aren't going to be able to save you. But you're going to come and you're going to say, my sales are low. And I'm going to know. This is only, I only scrolled back to podcasts we did from October hey guys, last year. We've been talking for years. We're on, this will be 159th episode. And I only scrolled back 30 episodes. <laughs> That is so many things that you need to try before you call it quits and blame your market. Yeah. It's not your market. And we're not going to tell you you have to do every 159 things. I can't do it myself. Absolutely but I also am not, not complaining about it. But when you have tried them all, then you can come to the group and complain about it. Yeah. I want to be able to say, did you try this? And you're like, yep. And here's an example. And I'm like, did you get Yeah, Here's my DSLR make model. Here's the lens I use. Here's my Lightroom editing workflow. Still doesn't work. Okay. Did you do a vendor shop? Yes, I did a vendor shop for three years. I didn't. Here was the cost in. Yeah, here's yeah. how. It's, yeah, I'm not going to get those answers from you because I know you haven't done them because I know you It's just you just want to sulk. And it feels great. That's like the potato chip of posts. Yeah. It's fattening and it has has no value. It is delicious. It feels good. It is wonderful. You'll find a lot of people that like potato yeah. chips. But when I ask you the things that actually would move the yeah. needle, you're like, well, I don't like that. That's a broccoli. Here's the thing though. Do me and Heather have bad days? Do we have it all together? Absolutely not. No, my, I kind of feel like that. Way. My little calendar on my wall still says, I think, February. <laughs> yeah. Did you, yeah, I'll bet you go look at the last time we posted the threads. <laughs> but I know the week, Corey and I said, Okay, like Corey and I will be like, oh, sales are low. And Corey will be like, well, we're not doing anything. And I'll be like, yeah, that would be yeah. the cause. <laughs> yeah. So then like Corey and I are like, okay, well, we got to start doing something, but we won't see the result of that for two or three months yeah. of consistent doing yeah. before we see consistent conversions. Yeah. 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 We don't have it all together, but I'm not going to sit there and help you sulk about it. I, I want to have a game plan, an actionable game plan to get you the sales. I don't want it to sit and commiserate. But you do need passion, compassion. I get that. But there's if compassion without a plan. Here's what, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be I'm going to be just super wide open. Your post saying that the cookie game is over gets people to quit and takes money off my table. And I'm not going to let you do it because I put way too much effort in telling people that they can market and sell for your post to come and ruin the perspective of 20 or 30 people. Amen. I'm a business too, man. I'm not doing this any charity work. If it was charity work, I would have quit a long time ago. I'd rather take my money and donate it. I'd rather keep going. I saw a post in Corey's local community group. The girl was collecting crayons and, and coloring books for the seniors that she worked with. And I was able to buy $100 worth with the money that I made from the effort that I put in. And that's the charity work we were going for. Okay. That's very nice. <laughs> Moving on to text, that was the end of my list. Okay. You can scroll back to the rest of the podcast and listen to You can listen to the whole podcast. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> There's a lot of laughter. <laughs> Here are our texts for this week. If you want to text in with your problems so we can commit a regular. <laughs> we'll it is 571-556-5644. The text do make this a little bit more interesting. It does. Heather thinks it's a highlight. I don't. I think, I think it's a highlight. Like, I would love. Is it a highlight? Is it not a highlight? Use Texan if you want to see the <laughs> Hi, twins. I just finished reading The Pumpkin Plan by Mike Michalowicz. I think that's how I'm pronouncing it. And I loved it. I mostly bake macarons and decorated cookies. However, macarons seem to be a bigger seller for me. When it comes to holidays or markets, it's what is the big seller. I'm usually left baking for just one or two cookie orders for the holidays or with a bunch of leftovers after markets. But when it comes to customs, that's where I feel like cookies are more popular. I don't know if I should let go of the cookies and fo- focus solely on macarons where it's less overhead and less competition, but less opportunity or keep chugging along with both. I'm definitely not as talented as some of the local cookie artists in my area, but I feel like I'm at a crossroads. Any input would greatly help Julie macarons and more. Long Island. Well, Julie, in your name, it's macarons. macarons I would think that you're a macaron and baker. <laughs> yeah, the and more though, yeah. I don't know what that is. So I would say if you're finding, if your audience is saying macarons, we will want we yeah. want to buy them, and your customs are sluggish, lean into being the macaron baker. And here's my tip: go ahead on the side in your free time, focus on upping your decorating of the sugar cookie game, so that when you do offer them, you're just as good as everyone around you. Yeah. So you could do like Corey's doing primarily customs, giving away sourdough. You're going to do primarily macarons, but when those macaron people come to pick up their order, you're going to give them the cookies you were practicing with. Granted, you're not spitting on them. You're still making them. <laughs> <laughs> 
like this one up and down. <laughs> You're going to give them that. And one, it's going to tell the macaron people, hey, I do cookies. Uh-huh. And it's going to allow you to practice new techniques without having to waste product. And then, but that's your differentiator. I think your audience is really telling you lean into macarons. The yeah. audience doesn't lie. You even said it yourself. I'm very good at it. And frankly, it is in your name. Yeah. So that is when people Google macarons. You're showing up in even search results that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why people, like you've kind of opened the and more, but the and more isn't telling anybody anything. Yeah. I don't know what and more is. So you could do macarons and custom cookies if you want to do like a brand refresh. But it's the and more that's not helping your sales. And it's the macarons that's leading. You're saying you're really good at them. You're saying they're lower cost to yeah. produce and you're and almost, you're better at them. And you're better at them. I would say lean doubly into that. You don't have to tell people, I'm no longer doing customs. You can just put it as a side yeah. burner as you start working. And you're going to see that your content that you post is going to lean heavily into macarons mm-hmm. and very lightly into custom cookies. But as you start working on the back end to upping your cookie decorating, you can see that content shift where you can now Absolutely. add it back in there. Absolutely. So it's going to take consistency over time to warm that audience up. I would say make your flagship product be macarons. Mm-hmm. That's your bread and butter. And then kind of add in the customs as an add-on, an upsell, and, you know, increase the order, yeah, uh, average order price. A big thing we saw in the cookie college recently is the addition of filler cookies. Mm-hmm. Filler cookies make it easier to make the custom order because half of them are just – in a shape of a circle in the right color mm-hmm. that match some of the more complicated cookies in the set. So that could be something maybe you think about in the future, you know, not so custom heavy where it's so much detail, mm-hmm. but you could do fillers. I wouldn't be opposed to just making macarons. Being like, yeah, I like having other offerings yeah. in the flanks, but just being that known to be a macaron baker. Listen, I hear, and I, I will take one. Macaron classes are like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh-huh, Yeah. Because that's a hard thing to Fish do. In a bar. You almost just need a little in-person guidance. I know. Oh, yeah. I want to see how you mess it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to know what it does really help. Like. There's yeah. a whole kiosk. Again, back at that expensive mall uh-huh. that has the rug making. There's a whole kiosk that only sells macarons. And, and it's it constantly got a line. Often. And all they differentiate is the colors yeah. of the shells. And yeah. they're beautiful. Gorgeous. They're, they're packaging. Packaging. Yeah, you can buy them to eat them or you can buy them to give them in this beautiful st- – Their packaging Gorgeous. is where the cost are. It does. It's gorgeous. Hi, twins. I'm just getting into cookie decorating uh, for a fun hobby at the moment. Maybe I'll end up doing it as a side job down the road. I love the podcast. Listen while I work, and I love your long, drawn-out antics of random stuff. I love. <laughs> <laughs> the full-time job is a mobile dog groomer. I own my own business. It's just me solo. Uh, so I love all your marketing tips, and I try to apply them to my business. I recently saw something in one of my grooming groups, and it said something along the lines of PSA to all business owners, future owners. If your business is an LLC, this is your business structure it must be included on any legal docs. It should not be included in your logo. They said this is actually makes the business look less professional. Okay, give me your honest opinion on this, please. I've been in business for 12 years, maybe five years. I became an LLC. Last year, I got a new embroidery down on my clothing and I added LLC to it. I may be relocating out of state and rebuilding my business from the ground up in the upcoming year. So I also went ahead and changed my Facebook, Instagram, website, and email to all include LLC at the end, face palm emoji. <laughs> My updated logo does have LLC on it too. Help, is this okay? Or would you recommend changing everything back just to my business name without the LLC at the end and just keep LLC usage and all legal documents? Thanks so much. Can't wait for all the future episodes. Keep I'll them coming. I'll let you take this one because I already know you have an opinion on it. It's not my opinion. It's the SEO okay, best practice. Right, right, when, right. when you used to make, it was either Yelp or Google business profiles, you were not actually allowed to add that the entity identifier because they just didn't want it. So you were only, it wouldn't be sugar cookie marketing LLC. It forced you to be sugar cookie marketing and as such, because we try to keep brands very consistent, if it doesn't have LLC, don't let it have it. I I do agree with a little bit that it is slightly unprofessional because you don't call it Coca-Cola S-Corp. Yeah. And you don't call it Disney LLC and you don't call it, you just call them what their brand uh-huh. is. That You're using a lot of characters adding those LLCs on there. However, it sounds like you spent a lot of money on the LLC. Here's what I do. And start using that stuff up. Like at the end of the day, you're not losing any leads yeah. on here. It's just, it's just the uh, cleanliness of the name without and the LLC. If you see how the direction of business is, mm-hmm. it has gone away from – that used to be popular – Back in the day to add right. the LLC and all that stuff. It used to be also popular to call yourself AAA because the phone book yeah. put you first. Yeah, yeah. Things changed uh-huh. and that has been one of them. 
Would I recommend getting rid of the LLC? If you're just starting out and you're listening to this, yeah, just don't include it. If you're awesome, if you are that, a lot of people start off and they're not even registered, so they're by default sole proprietorships. Then you become the LLC and you're like, hey, this establishes yeah. me. But you're proving it to the wrong person. You're saying to the government, I'm established, and you're able to get insurance that way and stuff like that. But to your audience, that cleaner look, because imagine if Facebook says you can't use an LLC identifier, but Instagram does. Now your handles are going to be different uh-huh. and the page tags are going to be weird. Sometimes people do comma LLC, but I see just they're using it sometimes and sometimes they aren't. Yeah. Sometimes they're leaving it off. If you think in terms of SEO and why it's so specific there is if you're not allowed to use it, don't use it at all because we want the brand to always be consistent across every social profile, every website, every directory uh-huh. listing. So yeah, no, they're not wrong. They're actually correct. I think a little bit about the whole, it makes you look how professional is a bit of a subjective thing. Yeah. The objective thing is you're not needed and it's also discouraged on some websites. Yeah. Uh, for that reason, I know. <laughs> That's what businesses used to do, license bond insured. It was like, just like a catchy phrase. Right. Yeah, we're license bond insured. <laughs> now I think people just say it and they're like, are you? <laughs> are you but old? yeah, I would leave that off. I would start. Next time you need to do another print run of your yeah. business card, just start leaving it off. Don't yeah. go and throw your shirts away. One, you're grooming dogs. I don't think the dogs here. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's going to sh- confuse anyone that the shirt says LLC. Yeah. But the Instagram, Facebook, and business page, yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably take it off uh-huh. there just because those are easy, cost you nothing. Uh, that is a great question. The last one is a shorter one. Hi, twins. So sorry if this has been asked before. I couldn't find a podcast on it. I know you just did a podcast about bad reviews, but my question is, how do you get more reviews in general? How do you ask for them? I always feel so weird asking someone to leave me a review. Thanks so much for all you do. Oh, and for those of us who haven't been around very long, what in the world is a prop fridge? Oh, uh, prop fridge. Guys, or- <laughs> <laughs> I love photography props. Pro- photos were before cookies. I liked taking photos. But as you take more photos, you gain more props. But my husband was like, you know, These one eyebrow raised. That's a lot of crap. Looking out the back door. But there was a broken refrigerator in our basement. Corey had this genius idea. And I was like, that's not being used. She sealed it of all the props. Once I came down there and I was like, is there any Cokes in here? And I, I opened I said, Don't open it. <laughs> tea cloth, towel, beads, <laughs> It was like the best storage because no one's opening a it broken had a bunch of fridge. And drawers. It was like oh. a great idea. And it was Genius. Big. And it, yeah, so that became the prop fridge. And, and so I'd be people were like, what What would you do? And I said, let me go shop my prop fridge. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I got. And then a bunch of people are like, well, I have, like, I don't know why defunct fridges are everywhere. Like, you get them. Because they're too hard to I move know. out. I, so I, just how did they there. arrive into the build? Like, did, were they built in the room? You can't I get think them out? they were built. They were there. Then the house built around. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the prop fridge. Corey, since we, the prop fridge didn't make the cut. So now you got a nice amount of key. I know. Sad day. Yeah, Sad my day husband, there. you should have seen his face when he saw that prop fridge swing over. <laughs> that, it was it was wild. It was also lit by a bulb. <laughs> so it was kind of crazy. Back to your original question. Asking for reviews is awkward because asking for reviews is awkward. That's not saying, hey, can you like me? Can you tell everyone about that? Yeah, can you, can you, can you? Uh, it's so funny. I worked for this company, I don't know, 15 years ago and not even, maybe even 10, but it was back when reviews were really starting to make a big difference yeah. on how people converted. Yes. And frankly, they had never focused on reviews. So the only reviews were the bad ones because the squeaky <laughs> wheel typically gets a So they were like, hey, Heather, can we come up with a strategy to get more reviews? So initially the easy one, we were like, well, let's just say we'll do a giveaway. If you leave a review, you're entered into the drawing. People felt bribed. Yeah felt disingenuous that they were being said, well, if you leave it to a five-star review, then you get entered to uh-huh. a prize. And very, very few people would leave these reviews. Although the follow-up was very direct, like, hey, if you leave this review, you're entered to win. I think it was like a $100 gift card yeah. and you do it monthly. It was a wet fart. <laughs> Uh, then we're like, okay, back to the drawing board. That's not working because people feel like they're being bought. How can we change this? So instead of asking, instead of the marketing team bribing for a review, we took away the incentive altogether and we had the project manager that the client had interfaced with tell them, if you leave a review, it actually helps me on my quarterly reviews, my quarterly review with my Uh boss. And it would mean so much to me. Now on the back end, to get the employees to do it, we had the giveaway between them. Yeah. Whoever got the most reviews, they actually gave them a $500 gift card. Uh, second most reviews got $250. And, and it really did reflect positively on them in the quarterly reviews, but they were making a ton of – one lady, one lady got it. She was a project manager, which she was one female amongst a bunch of dudes. Yeah. 
And she was like, I just saw it click. She was like, I could make $500 a month. She ended up being the person who won every month and turned around and bought a BMW because it covered her cost for the new car. So what we found is taking the incentive out and actually playing in the case of how much it truly does help. So when you have somebody that's like, I really liked your business, say, hey, listen, I know you really like that. I feel weird even asking for this, but it just helps me so much. Would you mind? And only link to one profile. Uh, people get overwhelmed. And then I want you to keep in mind, you have to ask 20 people to do that to get one profile yeah. review. It's not because they don't like you. It's because guess what? They're busy too. Uh huh. So we do have in the cookie college a whole how to ask for a review <laughs> course. Yeah. It, Cause it is so awkward. Yeah. But if you take anything from that case study I did at that business, asking authentically being vulnerable and being honest with, Hey, it just, it feels so weird asking you this, but it would really, really help me. Anytime just, mm-hmm. I do a giveaway. Mm-hmm. And yes. they come to get it from the door. I'm like, this is going to sound so crazy. One, I had to make the giveaways work for me. I yeah. had to make that go far and wide. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, thank you so much for participating. Every comment you give really honestly just warms my soul. And when I see your name, I'm like, oh, there she is. Would you mind? Can I bribe you and ask you to leave a review on Facebook? Amen. And do I feel weird asking? Absolutely. But am I more greedy than I am afraid of asking? Well, you make it work Absolutely. for you. So you, you want to do it and then you you got to make it work for you. Otherwise, you're going to be that I give stuff away and nothing ever happens. Yeah. Now, if you say I give stuff away and nobody ever bought anything, but I got five five star reviews. I would say. That's something out of it. Yeah. That's actually going bit. to. Yeah. At, at a higher rated companies are listed higher in maps. Yeah. yeah. Um, moving on to the cookie college. We actually have a Facebook live. I've got to add it. Yeah, you should. Um, I'm sorry. Michelle is like, she's, she's doing, so she gracious. So introduction to pie pops. She said, please come up with something more witty, please. I'm not good at this. <laughs> she's doing an introduction to pie pops and then she's doing a pie pop masterclass. Now I, she's actually launching like a digital pie pops course. Yeah. And so I told her, listen, I said, cause I'm like, you can't sell in the group, but what you can do is teach a Facebook live. You can tell people in the Facebook live, there's no requirement that the instructors have to keep these videos in the group at any time. Yeah. So I said, let's market it and say that you'll teach them everything they need to know. But after the live, it gets deleted and then you can sign up for a course. Oh, nice. So that is what she's doing. So if you're interested in pie pops, if you don't even know what they are. They look like pop pies on a pop. Yeah. So it's really cute. It's a different. That's great for a market. Thing to try. Yeah. I think they do well for a vendor market. And yeah. Eating a pie as you walk. I mean, I got a pickle on a stick the other day. Pickle on a stickle? Pickle on a stickle. Yeah. And I was eating it. I saw that picture. It was cute. <laughs> uh, but how, but like eat food on the go for events like yeah. that is a real smart thing. So I have to add that she's going to teach. Uh, the first one on May 17th and the second one. Oh, she's also teaching on May 17th. Or may I have them pulled up differently. But I have to add that yes. uh, to the Facebook Live. So speaking of the group. I do have a gentleman I've been talking to. He is a branding. Nate would like a word. Expert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He does logo design. And I found him on TikTok. And his uh-huh. videos were so catchy. Uh-huh. And he's like straight shooter. So I have asked him if he wouldn't mind teaching a Facebook Live. And he said, absolutely. So I got to send him the information. Oh, I like that. If you want to teach a Facebook Live, if you want to add value, if you made a mistake, you want to learn from it. If you have a product you would like to feature, you have to give us something before you take. Mm-hmm. We will force the AI out of giving something to these groups. <laughs> you can sign up at sugarcookiemarketing.com forward slash live. It's how you register. And once you register, I walk you through actually how yeah. to teach a live yes. through an automated message. The Cookie College I am is literally the best talked about thing it. in the world. The entire podcast. What is dropping next week? Grilling and chilling. We have a grill and chill class. This will be a very easy class. We all all the themes drop a month prior to yeah. when we meet them, so it gives you over four weeks to promote the class. So this will drop first week of May, but technically it's for June. So it's grill and chill. You're thinking summer vibes. We have yeah. a T-bone steak. But all May you promote the class. Yeah, June you teach the class. Yeah. That's the way it's designed. I mean, you can teach them whenever you uh-huh. want. But we like to give people. Some elbow room to promote. Those classes are everything you need to teach a cooking class. We actually have a relationship with Sweeping Off. She prints them and ships them. She also sells the STL files. Yeah. If you wanna, people will ask people ask this question. They're like, why are the STLs as much as the cutters? Because the STLs you can print as many times as you yeah. want. So technically that's why they cost the same. But if you need instant turnaround, that's how you're going to do mm-hmm. it. The cookie class kits are $63.00 a month, but you get every class kit that's dropped in 2024. So this will actually be the sixth class. Yeah, you get six classes for that. Yeah, for 63 bucks one time. Like it's not like 63 per class, it's 63 and you get every class that's dropped before yeah. you and you'll get a new class each month. Nice. Or 
or the better bet is sign up for the Cookie Cottage, which includes those class kits, not only 2024, but 2023s. That's a whole other. So it'll be 17 classes. Yeah. And then we also have a few extra classes that members have taught or that we gave away from uh, prior years. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of value there. I actually just taught a course on adding DMARC records to your email. Sounds complicated. Sounds not tech savvy. No, a little it? techy. It's very, it took three minutes to teach But I'm you. not tech savvy. It's three minutes. It sounds a bunch of fancy words. I tell you what the fancy <laughs> words mean. And I tell you the two seconds yeah. it takes to do that change. But Heather, none of my emails reach my clients. This is that. This is email yeah. deliverability. It's signaling to Google and Yahoo inboxes that you are who you say you are. And the email that you meant to send was from me. Mm-hmm. But, 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 but Heather. Our Heather. goal is to have you sign up for the college. We don't want you there forever. I mean, we love you. Stick around. Don't leave us. Uh, our goal is to give you the tools to grow your business, to have the confidence while you do it. Why are you smiling? I'm sorry. This lady left a room. When I wrote that thread yesterday, <laughs> yeah, she was like, I signed up at the college one month and I quit. I, I canceled. And you know why? Because I saw such a difference in my business that I got too busy to stick in. And she's like, I have I have not stopped making money. And I said, this has got to be the best worst for me ever. <laughs> We're here to help the lazy, mostly because I'm lazy myself. Mm-hmm. If you want a handheld approach to online bakery marketing, that college is for you. If you want to get in the trenches and find the videos on YouTube, you absolutely can. You can find just about anything on Google. Not not taught by us. Not taught by us. But you'll be fighting through the things, trying to find what DMARC means. (laughs) It is extremely (laughs) long. Or you can sign up for the college. Join us if if you're happy with a month. Just join us for a month. Download everything though. So yeah. download, you get the group, you get the classes, but you also get all those class kits. You get all the transfer files. You get all the digital downloads from the, we've been doing that for three years. Yeah. That's three years of content. If you paid for one month, it's 76 bucks. We can't stop you. Can't stop. I hope you'd use it. I hope you take advantage of but it. But before you quit decorating cookies, give us one month to help you. Yeah. Except for you have to do the work. Again, there's no way around implementing the work. I can tell you the secret path to wealth. But if you don't raise your fingers, you ain't going to get rich. If you don't turn that doorknob with your hand, you can't step through. The door, your toddler. <laughs> <laughs> um, on just sponsors, we have two awesome sponsors who have oddly stuck with us forever. Eddie, the direct-to-food edible printer. Love him. Love him. Best boyfriend you've ever had. I coolest, still coolest machine I've Someone ever seen. Someone took him. Oh, that in my thread of like, what have you added? Yeah. A lot of people are like adding Eddie has really differentiated my lead sources because I'm able to produce more. But someone's like, I take Eddie to a vendor market. Genius. And I print on cookie. It is such a spectacle. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. so neat to see. I even look at it with the bright colors. <laughs> yeah, it flashes all these yeah. crazy colors. I'm not sure if the color flashes are necessary, but I love them. <laughs> because it's like green, red, blue, red, green. <laughs> And uh, Eddie's a direct food printer, and you can buy him for the low, low price of $3,000. Whoa, that's a lot. Yeah, I'm not going to say that Eddie ain't cheap, but Eddie is only a percentage of every sale you make for this year. Uh-huh. Now, granted, we're halfway through the year. I know. It's a larger percentage of yeah. your sale. You, you can have Eddie pay for himself. A lot of people will get Eddie, and they'll be like, mark it for me. No, I'm sorry. Eddie Machine. He's got a man's name, but he doesn't do much unless yeah. you press print. You uh-huh. actually have to take an action. So back to kind of the podcast topic, get an Eddie and hit the ground running. Run, Print Eddie logos on everything. Absolutely everything. Run into every uh-huh. business. That's how Corey's gotten these Neiman Marcus orders, which have averaged $1,000 per order. Yeah. Eddie's only 3000 And this is only some of the corporate I orders. Know. You've been able to use them for custom orders. Yeah. A lot of corporate because that's a lot people's just like Corby. <laughs> so let's say you take the tip from our podcast a day of joining a local networking event. Get that, Eddie. Bring that, Eddie. That would yeah. be so crazy if someone's 30 seconds just oh, printing on that, I would say if you got the 10 minute spot and mm-hmm. just have him printing the whole time with this little carousel. Oh, that'd be so wild. Yeah, have an assistant just yeah. feed him and then have them pass out. Yeah. You know, just be like licensed to print money. Uh huh. Don't print money with Eddie on a cookie. No, you can get pretty close. Money long, right? <laughs> Eddie pays for himself. Wink, wink. If the feds show up, eat it. <laughs> the feds would you like an olive for the dollar cookie? <laughs> um, go on to our, Oh, you can learn more about Eddie through Eddie Printers Users Group on Facebook. Mm-hmm. The meringue powder that I use, if you're not familiar with sugar cookies, 
The icing that is royal icing is made up of three ingredients, which is water, powdered sugar, and meringue powder. Meringue powder is the bee's knees. There's so many brands out there. The one that I have locked on to for the past few years is called Royal Batch, and it's by a company called Bakety Bake. Royal Batch is the dream team of meringue powders because it already has a ton of ingredients already in it. It comes with vanilla extract in there, so it's already tasty. Bright white food coloring is also in there, so you don't have to add anything to it if you just wanted to pipe straight your eddy cookies straight from the bowl you mm. absolutely can and corn syrup which is what gives royal icing a softer bite so if you're doing florals a lot of people have to add it into there it already comes within there i love royal match it just whips up silky smooth it's just well bees knees love it i actually follow the recipe on the back of the bag except for i take a tablespoon of meringue powder out so it lasts me even longer oh. longer crocky Crikey! I actually went through all of my drawers, and I have Corey's been so Corey's been going through a purgy era. Me and Heather talked about it. This is our twin trust. Okay, I'm sorry. Use code twins for use code twins to save ten percent okay, off. I want to hear your twin trust. Heather said the amount that someone would pay for land here in Northern Virginia, in Northern Virginia is insane because it's the location. Mm -hmm. It's how much space you have. Space is valuable. Space is valuable. Oftentimes, we have the space already in our houses, but we'll look and we'll open the doors and we'll be like, we're packed. We're we're packed to the gills. We got to get a new house. We got to get a bigger house. Yeah, we're go. bursting at the seams. We're too capacity. Oftentimes, the only reason we're bursting at the seams is because we have put too much in the seam. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to go through my doors because space matters. I hate looking at the stuff on the counter. Visual I, noise. noise. So let me throw away anything expired. If That's an easy expired, one. That's a gateway drug yeah, to, to purging. Absolutely. If I have not touched it in three months, how long will I continue not touching this? Yeah, forever. Yeah. That was the so, easiest yeah. thing. First, there was gate. spatulas. Where collect, where uh, I thought you had this. Uh, Corey said, I fine. Okay, like you have a bunch of spatulas, right? Uh -huh. Let's say you have a 10 in a drawer. Yeah. One you're going to reach for the most. Then you're going to have your second guy if the first guy's in the... Uh -huh. But Corey's like, I find that I only reach for spatulas that are made of silicone. Yeah. She's like, all my wood spatulas, I go out of I'm my way to... I'm around them. Yeah. They're in the way. So Corey gave them away. I did. Gave them away. Someone's like, how how could you not just hoard your spatulas? Another baker said to me. And it's because space means more to me space now. Space is valuable. You go through your 20s, if you're anything like us, and you say, things are all that matters. I want more shoes. I want more purses yeah. and clothes. And then in your 30s and you're surrounded by your things and you're like, I'm not happy. This is a lot of stuff. This is a lot and of I'm stuff. storing everything. And I man I'm like a project manager of my crap. Yeah. And then you turn around and in your 30s, you're like, how can I dig myself out of this? The easiest way is expired things, expired spices, but expired spices don't go bad. It doesn't matter. You're not using them. That's why uh -huh. they're expired. So get rid of those. Start fighting back for your land you've paid yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. Because space is a commodity uh -huh. and a lot of times we are wasting it yes it's so wasted i think unfortunately the way our brains are designed is it feels absolutely amazing acquiring things. absolutely uh, going to ross and hunting and pecking is a full-time hobby it's euphoric it is it is such a high <laughs> when you find something yeah. that you didn't need that you now uh -huh. want and you can't then you go and then you take it to your house and you put it there and you're like well it didn't look anything like i thought it would uh, but I feel embarrassed to get rid of something you spent money on. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to just see if one day I'll like it and you don't. Yeah. And then time passes. And then you have the anxiety of getting rid of something that you truly never I used. Know. But you know, that spend... you spent money on and it feels mm. like throwing away cash. Absolutely. So what I was really helped me and it adds value to these community groups is I'll like have it. And it was so embarrassing. I treated myself to a coach bag. You did? Used it once. Yeah. Used it once. It turns out it just wasn't the style I really liked, but I didn't want to return it because I might have used it. No, I never used it again. Yeah. Uh, so I said to that Facebook group, I said, I'm going to be embarrassingly open here. I have a person, I've used it once. It's in stunning condition. I'm embarrassed. I'm never going to throw something like that away, but I would love to give it to somebody, but I'm only going to give it to you if you use it until it falls apart. Yeah. I said, I want this to go to somebody who's going to abuse it. Yeah. I want it. I want all the lack of using I did to be used by you. <laughs> And this lady's like, you know, it was green. It was a very pretty bag. Yeah. And she's like, green is my color. I've been thinking about it. And I messaged her and I was like, hey, you want to get it? She's like, oh my God, I will use it until the strap's Yeah. Fall. And I said, that's all I want to know. I so I bought day. back space. You I don't did. have to look at the guilt of this person. Yeah. And then somebody else is out there and I know. It. That's why if you're not in the buy nothing, sell nothing group, don't get in there to get people's stuff. Get, there get to in there it. to give it. Because if you can't 
wrestle with the, I'm going to toss this Mm -hmm. because it feels too harsh. Mm -hmm. Give it away. Give it to someone who could use it. Consider the fact that somebody using it provides all the value that's lost when it's sitting in a closet, taking up your space. Mm -hmm. And once we start fighting back for space, then, and when you stop spending money, you actually start saving money. That's the counter result of it. When you put saved money in an interest bearing high yield savings account, then you're like, if I spend this, I'm not going to be making money on this money anymore. Do I really want to give up the free money I was making? Yeah. I am fighting back for my space. It takes, it takes, it's a mental battle. It is. Nate walked downstairs and I was like, something's missing from this room. Really? On the piano, I had this candle holder. Mm. And I said, yeah. So that it, I, I tell us how your tell us your candle perch. I thought that was very self aware. Candle perch. I love getting candles and putting them in a cupboard. One Bath and Body Works makes the candle buying process too ex- good. It just uh, delicious. Addiction, yeah. yeah. One they have that fancy looking candle area now, and now they run that one deal a year where it's 12, three wicks uh, for like two dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put candles in a cupboard. And then I don't have to see it. I don't have to say, Corey, you can't buy any more candles. You have a billion of them. Mm-hmm. No, they're in a cupboard. I can uh-huh. buy whatever I want. So I lined them up in my living room. Oh, they are? They're all there. On visuals? They're a little down lower. <laughs> they don't want other people to see. And Corey's like, I am burning. I'm literally that, with burning With the amount them. of candles that I have, yeah. why don't I have to stop burning them? Yeah, and you know what? Guess if like you can burn all of those, and none of you bought space back and enjoyed the product. I, but why am I hoarding them and not enjoying it? Feels so <laughs> feels so great to acquire. It feels so not great to fight for space. Yeah, Once you, Ruth Ann is eighty five, right? And um, she had gotten some other construction done, and the guy came to provide the quote, and he looks around. I think it was painting walls or something, and he was like, "Oh, so you're, you're moving?" And she's like, "No." And he was like, well, your house is staged. And she's like, oh, no, this is just the house. And he said, I've never come to houses that look like this because everyone has so much stuff. I only come to houses when they're about to be sold. Yeah. Isn't that crazy that we know our houses are more desirable to people when there's less stuff? Uh-huh. Them? They're more desirable to us. Uh-huh. That's why when you go to an apartment complex and you tour that one, yes. I say to everyone, look, it's there's really no cables. Thing. Yeah. We don't want to see uh-huh. the cables. But that staged empty yeah. room is what we imagine ourselves in and we'll bring all our crap in there. What people don't understand is visual noise is overwhelming. It causes brain clutter. It does. You have so many decisions you can make a day, mm-hmm. but b- trying to find a cutter under a pile of stuff is mm-hmm. not the ones you should be wasting your time and energy on. I know I talked about it. I was watching an episode of like, um, it was like these couples who had too much stuff or something. And the man is back when people wrote checks spent, he said 15 minutes every day trying to find the checkbook twice a day. Yeah. But over the course of his life, it was hundreds and yes. hundreds of hours spent looking for something. Yeah. Which is frustrating anyways. Uh-huh. That's a lot of effort into something that if you streamlined your collective existence of product, yeah, you'd be a happier person. I said to Corey, I said, I'm having a hard time getting rid of like moisturizers and all these like skincare products because skincare went healthy skin. It felt great getting it. They were pretty expensive. Uh But I said, if I'm honest with myself and I put on the countertop exactly what I use every day, I'd have five things. Yeah. And those are what I, because they don't make me break out and they make me feel, they they don't have this texture I don't like. And I got rid of everything else. Uh I'd only have the five products I truly actually wanted. You know what people need to go through? Your sock drawer. There's socks you like. There's socks you don't like. There's socks that match each other. You know there's what? a socky that does not have a partner Those anymore. big socks that you're supposed to use to like go to bed. Like yeah. I had like so many of them, uh-huh. but I'm like, I'm not using these. We're all gifts. Don't need them. Yeah. Now people who do want sockies can use them, and I wasn't using them, and I got drawer space. Money. Yeah. And drawer space, uh, nothing like it. It is so when crazy. It is so it. crazy when it tips the scale over to the true richness is the lack of things. Yeah. Yes. It's also more affordable that way. I know. I know. So you need, still need deep in this? I was hoping it would prepare you. I was hoping you I'm still going, going through So like I need to go through, I went to find a sock today and mm-hmm. I'm picking through the socks. I said, obviously there's an issue there. There you go. The time spent searching. Then you're going to get to the stage where nothing is expired. So you got rid of all the expired did, things. Yeah. You got rid of anything broken. That's always. I took some pantry space back. So yeah. my visual noise is at an all-time low. Right. Then you move into the stage where everything I have, I kind of like. Then you're going to get rid of the things you kind of like because you don't love them and yeah. you find yourself reading. Then you get into the advanced level brain box <laughs> fugue state of I love everything, but I don't use it. Uh-huh. Then the final tier is I love this. I use it, but I use this a little bit more. Uh-huh. I haven't gotten there yet. So I invested in those jackets, Jackies. Yeah, you're going to get rid of some I'm going to have to get rid of the ones that look like they've been washed All 50 million times. Someone said, yeah, if anything is in disrepair, if any clothes are torn, one, you can't donate them. So just, you know, yeah. recycle trash or whatever. 
and then go to the things that don't fit well. Yeah, because you're, you're not gonna wear. You're not gonna like my pants. You're not gonna like them. If you, I know. you have pants. I have pants from galore. when you were a teenager. I have pants from every size I've ever been. Yeah, and Pregnant you're not gonna one. Even if you did fit them, the style's gone. Yeah. Well, plus they're old. The player script. came back. Player I know, came back. I if did. you had waited the fifteen, said. <laughs> but you and I are still in. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. If you don't like it, if it's old, if it's out of date, if it's out of style, if it just has bad juju, get rid yeah. of that. And then you're gonna actually wow. The things that I'm allowing into my life, I've ch- allow. I've chosen. Uh-huh. You know what I don't do? Read. You know what I have? Books. <laughs> <laughs> Getting rid of them. I said, what am I going to do? They're not going to just magically jump into my brain. Someone said once, I'm not getting rid of books because they remind me. And that's what they say. A lot of clutter yeah. is a mental it's memory emotional, trigger. It's emotional, yeah. But so then, and then they have this one. This really threw me. They're like, if you want to be reminded of something, take a picture of the yeah. physical object. I'll never look at the picture. It seems weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to look at this. <laughs> So then I'm like, but then I don't really want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, girl. My other twin trust is, uh, speaking of making your yard pretty, my neighbor They scalp it. <laughs> yeah. They ruined Corey's yard. And it, it, it a bratty teenager weird. got in trouble and he was told to mow Corey's yard out of niceness, but he took, completely cut it down to I nothing. know. So how can you tell someone stop being nice? I know. How do you manage it? Corey put up flags and said they were I got bombed. yellow flags. And I just put them out there. And the neighbors, the mom of the son that butchered the yard was out. And I was like, hey, my cat went missing the other day. I was like, hey, my cat's missing. Also, I put up these yellow flags. And she's like, yeah, I don't know what happened to your yard. Like, listen, I know we're both saving face here. Right. So that's all I needed to be. My little yellow flag. What if they maneuver the lawnmower around? It will around be not maneuver <laughs> because the yellow flags will be off. <laughs> There's no grass there to mow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I don't know if I have any trenches. I've been doing anything. No, no. Corey and I wanted to for this community group. It's for this very small section of a small area. It's a, it's an unincorporated town within a town. Yeah, so it's nothing, right? It's not even. Like, <laughs> it's a, the a little road. <laughs> it's one road, and there's a community. Yeah. It. It's like basically if you fall into this one HOA mm-hmm. that you're considered a part of this community. But it's ridiculous because for as small as this community is, whenever that's where the Thai place is uh-huh. that I like to me, and Corey lives down there. There's so many traffic lights, and none of one them are of them. sequenced. You can't. No, if you hit one red, you'll hit the next one as it's turning red. Like I was just. At you the almost other have one. to go. At 85 miles an hour. You gotta go to five get miles out of an hour? whatever the vortex that you're in. <laughs> yeah, I think you gotta go five miles an hour or 105. If you miles have to be somewhere, you won't. Uh, you're not gonna be there. <laughs> you're not gonna be there. <laughs> that thing is no longer there. So, Corey and I thought, how can we create community in a community group that, that really all we do is share the same road? But also getting our name out. Yeah, so we had this funny idea. What did? I'm gonna the give you traffic this one. Lights. Was so funny. Yeah, I was. was going to see Corey and I literally hit every day. Yeah, Heather was like, sorry. I just started sending her Snapchats of the red light. Like, cause this one was red, the next one was red. And I was like, how funny if, if it would be if we made a bumper sticker that said probably sitting at a red light in Lake Ridge, this area. Yeah. These red lights. So we said, so we You would them. only know that if you knew if that. If you were on this road. Right. So in the community group, I said, if we give these away, how many of you would stick these on your car? And someone's like, this would be so funny to see us in real yeah. life. Yeah. If we had these on our car. So, so that is that's that our next twin test. Test. Corey put one on our car and then was running up behind her at traffic lights to get a picture of it in a red light. <laughs> glorious, glorious. Yeah. I put my flashes on, but I was like, I can beat this red light. It's I know, so I saw long. You. And people Heather started turning their wheels yeah. off. I like, oh, uh, come uh, back uh, yeah, yeah. I thought there was a turning lane there for some reason. I did too with Yeah, it was with Snowman. Snowman. I saw with your Snowman. I saw your hazard. I said, going. Oh no, our nar. I said, I'm gonna put this thing in break and then <laughs> run up there like a crazy person. All right, guys, sorry for such a heavy podcast where Heather kind of attacked you. I am your favorite twin. My name is Corey. If you would like to tag me in the I Love Corey post, Corey Mira, because I got banned for talking about Pete before. Love ya. Bye.